Yo, what's up, First Smoke family? You know what it is today. We got Wook Sauce Winery, episode 90. Tell them a little bit about it. Hash makers, award winning, some of the best in the country, if not the best in the world. You've heard of them, Wook Sauce. Come on. Go to the website, fsotd.com, subscribe. If you haven't, get the merch, family ties. This is going to go on pre order before the 420 event and we're gonna put a link where you can get it on the website as well the the blank on this is crazy the fit on this is crazy they fit a little big so get your size or maybe a size under but i'm usually a large i'll do a medium on this one um dude shirts are insane I'm, yeah i'm proud of these all um, the merch also the rolling trays there's lighters um go to dr dabber drdabber.com use code first smoke and they're going to hook you up. And what else? Growers, hash makers, trappers, whatever, right? Growgeneration.com, grow generation stores all over the U.S. That's who we're rocking with. If you're interested in trying Drip Hydro and you're a grower and you want to try a new nutrient company, why is my weed not purple? Why is it not tasting the way it should? Drip Hydro. Let us know. Family at firstsmokeoftheday.com is the email. Let us know. Link me up with Drip Hydro. Without further ado, we got Wook's House Winery, episode 90. Let's do this. And when we were driving back from the waterfall, instead of driving through the main road, we drove through the back road. And then it's where when we saw all the farms. I'm going to tell everyone right here, right now, cannabis is not 100% harmless. Thank you. It is not. Thank you. You can use that to ch try to block stuff. I would, at least in my life, the plant never lets me block anything. Because, yeah, people romantize the plant. And the plant is amazing, and the plant can do a lot for you. But also, the plant will show you the truth. What's good, man? We're back. First smoke of the day. It's your boy here at Pack Guys in the building. I'm here with my co-host, Biggs, aka Blackleaf. Hitting that Dr. Dabber like crazy, man. I you guys pray for him. You got that gas. We got episode 90 in the building. My man Flynn from Wook Sauce Rinery and Alice from Girls in Green. How are you? We're fine. Boy, Doing boy. great. Doing good. <laughs> Smoking a lot of good hash. Super happy to be here today. Thank y'all so much. Yeah, we're super stoked. Absolutely. You guys, man, you guys got so much on the table. You brought so many gifts and uh, you stay busy. Both of you guys stay busy. So it's awesome. It's fun to watch and fun to see. And hopefully we can educate some people on some some hash today. And congrats on yeah. the big win. Absolutely. Ego clash. Yeah. Second place, right? Yes. With which drain? With grape gas grown by Willards. So I say that he got the win because he grew it, but we, we just washed it. But yeah. Well, you so, washed it, really. Yeah. I, I know. was a <laughs> all women day in the washroom that day. I honestly had nothing to do with what happened that day. So the win really goes all to her. And to Will. <laughs> and Will. Yeah. It's a true collaboration. Definitely. The it's grower is always mm -hmm. yeah. the, first, the first primary. That's dope. It's true. So, I mean, let's bring it back to the beginning. You know, we got to start there. Uh, your journeys, I'm sure, in cannabis definitely started before you guys met, but it's it's a beautiful thing that it brought you two together. Mm -hmm. And now that you guys co-create and, uh, and do so much for the game. So I love to get familiarized with both ends. Definitely hash united us. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> like we met exchanging hash. Wow. Yeah. In 2018. Mm -hmm. um, Whose was better? Of course. Well, he <laughs> gave, he gave. Oh, now that, don't even play. Dude, uh, is better. No, babe, come on. I literally gave him like almost like full spec, like traditional hash, and he gave me like a big jar of like 150 cookies and cream. And wow. I was like, okay. He, he would have right tested me to see man. if I was a hash girl, He's like, you know? I'm going in. I got, I've been tucking this one. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Well, I knew this girl appreciated the resin like no one else I'd really ever met. So. Wow. Damn. But it's funny because I didn't know his face, right? And I had frozen yeah. green already and I was showing my face for the first year. So when I came to California, I decided to show my face for the first time, like with the project. 
And um, so I didn't know how, how old Flynn was. I thought that Flynn was like way older because of the way he talked. I was like, well, I'm just going to like exchange hash with this guy. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's 50, 60. Uh, he's going to give me a freeze dryer class because he was like, I'm going to teach you on the freeze dryer because all I knew how to do was like drying it in pizza boxes, you know? <laughs> and then I arrived and I was like, okay, this guy is the same age as me. And then we exchanged some hash. And we went out a few times, and then I came the next year to work together with him. And that's the hash uniting us. Wow. And so, I mean, how far apart? Like, where are you originally coming from? And then how about you? Uh, I'm, well, I'm from Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, what brought me to California was the fact that I smoked, like, maybe, like, around 10 years ago, I smoked some, like, San Fernando Valley OG. I smoked bubble hash in Brazil, like, from Humboldt for the first time. And it blew my mind. So I was like, what is that? You know, I had smoked a lot of like Moroccan hash, you know, like Poland and like more like, like the eggs, what we call it, like the Kulo hash, like we say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all know where it comes from. But, yeah. um, but when I smoked bubble hash for the first time, I it just like that, like San Fernando Valley. And it blew my mind. I was like, where is this made? Like, where does it come from? And then a friend told me it was from Humboldt. And I was like, okay, I got to go to Humboldt. So when I graduated, I came to Humboldt. Uh, as soon as I graduated, like I graduated in psychology, I came to California for a psychedelic science conference. And then I went to Humboldt because I was like, I need to know how this is made and where does it come from? So that's kind of like what brought me here. What was that first Humboldt trip like? It was amazing. Uh, so I connected with like a couple hash makers in Humboldt and I was by myself and uh, they just welcomed me in their houses and I've been always pretty much a little adventurous, you know. Uh, so I went there, I saw farms and it was the first time I've ever seen like real deal farms like that. Because well, in Brazil you have what, like four, four plants, six plants, you know. <laughs> For us to do like a round of bubble hash, it would save like trim from like three to four rounds maybe. So it was just like a different, like a very amazing experience. So it blew my mind, changed the game, and I actually never looked back. I just got my degree and did like, wee -woo, and you? then yeah, just stayed around to try to wash some hash and learn more about the plants. That's awesome. So it was always hash for you, though. Yeah, it was always hash for me. That was like what got your interest. And in actually, the first time I smoked hash uh, in Brazil, it's like this: when you start. If you're very privileged, you start smoking flour, right? But if you're not, you start smoking brickweed because it's what they have available in the country. It's what 99% of the people smoke. Um, so when I first smoked like hash from Paraguay, which is like a black Paraguayan hash, it was already way better than the brickweed for me. Right. And then when I moved up on Moroccan hash, and then when I figured out bubble hash, I was like, wow. So yeah, always hash for me and always spliffs for me. I'm off spliffs two months today. Damn, uh, that's a new thing for me. That's why there's flour <laughs> on the table. But yeah, always hash. Always hash. That's awesome. So how long did your like hash journey go before you guys got together? And man. I'll say that I washed hash for the first time. I did like, I can't say hash. I did some green juice almost in Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> Suco verde. Suco verde. Yeah. Yeah. Did you guys drink juice? it? <laughs> <laughs> I almost did. It looked so awful. It was little, so little bad. Warm, a little rough. Yeah, I feel yeah. like it was like a little, maybe over 10 years ago, like in 2012. Yeah. I washed hash for the first time in Brazil. But wow. of course, the scale was totally different, right? Mm -hmm. Washed with well, like the, the one gallon bubble man's bags you know those like little ones one gallon. <laughs> <laughs> and Not then i did it completely wrong um with like my friends and ex-partner and then it just like looked like green juice it was not great so there's no, always room to improve you know can't believe we're here winning cups mm. nowadays with that first green hash i did <laughs> there's something to be said though when you it almost like weeds out the less passionate like something about where you're like I know it can get this way and you're having, you're kind of having to battle a little bit and go through like the learning phase and still stay in it and strive for, it, it just builds better character and more passion. I feel like it weeds yeah. a lot of people out that little bit of resistance in the beginning of, I don't know what I'm doing. Let me try to figure it out. And then a couple of years go by and you stick with it. And it's nice to make mistakes too, because it's with those mistakes that you learn and there's room for improvement. Yeah. So I'm thankful for the, 
the green juice I made 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it wouldn't be best possible to make all this fucking fire foam out from yeah. nowadays. It, it doesn't surprise me that you're winning cups now, though, because if you had the audacity to come to Humboldt right away or right after you graduated, like you're definitely on your way to achieving whatever it is you're trying to do from Brazil. It's like, you know, and like you said, you you went up there and started seeing farms right away. Not a lot of people do that or like can do that, you know, the like following just, year. I actually you got a certain personality. You I know? lived in a farm like the following year in 2018. So I connected with Sunshine and I'm just very, I, like I feel emotional when I talk about this lady because she's totally like a humble creature and she's one of the most amazing farmers I know. She's sometimes she's even not misunderstood because she has her completely crazy ways. And actually she's a woman running a farm. So yeah. it's not, there's not many that you see. Does she have a brand name? Uh, Some both grown. Okay. So she's in, Sh she's around Shively, kind of like um, uh, Holmes Flat area. Mm -hmm. She dries farms her weed, which is amazing because she's by the Eo River beds. And um, she knew about my passion for cannabis, but she also knew about my educational background on teaching and uh, doing harm reduction work. So she allowed me to stay in her farm. And I lived in her farm for almost six months. Uh, Sleeping like literally in her living room, you know, and just like going to going to the farm every day, eight hours a day on the field. And at the end of the season, she gave me like a bunch of trim. And then that was me like washing my first like run here in California. So that's the hash I gave you. The loopy uh -huh. fruit hash. No, it was amazing. <laughs> that's awesome. It was made with love. Incredible. Huh? Exactly. Love. And yeah, passion awesome. to spend six months trying to figure things out kind of and being apart and watching the grow, you know. It's a lot of work. You can't skip that. I don't know anyone that has, you know, it's amazing too. Like just to see passionate people, whatever it is they're doing, achieve it and like keep going and then unlock new levels and stuff. Like it's just very interesting. Cause like, I can't imagine what the scene would be like in Brazil. And then you've, you've come far fast, you know, to be like where you're at, you're at the top, like, you know, you're up there competing with like, top in the world and that's just it's awesome to see for sure and then what it's became you know how you're like going around now and teaching others and stuff and helping other people out like that's just that's an amazing journey so props to you for real much love and definitely i wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the people around me like flynn actually like sunshine also that actually put me in the game for real trusted me fully to like live in her house and uh, there's a lot of people that inspired me to be here. A lot of women that inspired me to like follow my passion and actually hold space for women out there. So I'm, I deeply appreciate and I definitely didn't do it by myself. <laughs> well, and to flip That's to awesome. that now, Flynn, let's, where, where'd you grow up and let's hear a little bit of your backstory. Yeah, I think it's kind of funny because in a way, like I come from just such a opposite world in Minnesota with the cold winters and definitely not the brazilian beach vibe you know what i mean like Straight she, up. i don't think she's been back yet when it's dead of winter like that Just to summer. experience like a real when it's negative 20 it's cold outside you're like really you're freezing your ass off for sure it's a so different it's a different vibe the washroom doesn't affect you then huh you it's, got it in your blood. Yeah, man. It's funny. She calls me the Yeti sometimes because I'm in there just like shirtless, just in overalls, you know, like just grinding through the wash because it's active in there. It might be 45, but you're working, dude. You're yeah. the way we do it, especially because we do a lot of hand wash, like hand love, no machines. Like, you know, yeah. It's a vibe. Damn. It's a vibe. It's a and workout. Overall, it's just going at it. Uh huh. I never go to the gym until I met this girl. She got me going to the gym a bit lately, trying hey, to get my I health. I never up. go to the gym too. I just started two weeks ago. I know, <laughs> but yeah, the gym. Pretty much the washroom and the grill were always my gym. You know, hauling stuff around, lifting stuff, doing washes, and like that's kind of how I always stayed fit with doing what I love and cannabis and stuff like that. So yeah, staying active, yeah. moving. Anyone yep. who's had to pull a forty U bag or a seventy three U seventy U bag and hold that thing up for about eight to ten minutes while you're man let me shine a light on the first video i saw from flynn before i met him that guy was in the cold room washing with like nike shoes and shorts and he was literally spinning two buckets yeah i saw that video i was like what 
One paddle each arm, baby. One paddle on each arm. <laughs> How on earth is that go. possible? Working. Let's go. Yeah, that Minnesota boy, you know. Let's go. That's yeah. gangster. That's like, gangster. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. back in the day, I was a crazy kid, to be honest. Like, I moved from Minnesota to Seattle, and that's kind of when my journey with the plant began. But even in Minnesota, I loved hash. Even in high school, I had a Frenchie cannoli shirt I was wearing that no, oh, no one knew what no one knew what that was, you know, where I was from in Minnesota. Like I always loved hash. I was always super into like online looking at what was popping on YouTube, all the like uh you know, all the things going on in Cali that I wasn't able to take a part of yet. You know? So that's crazy in high school. Yeah. yeah in yeah. Minnesota. Yeah. Like, that's where insane. Did you find him? <laughs> online man it yeah. was all really just me geeking out on the internet like i was one of those kids that before i started smoking weed i did a lot of research and to know like what am i getting so into all the top I shit. Know, yeah. like what what am i gonna do to my brain like is this healthy and then i realized like wow these people been lying to me this isn't harmful like i come from the dare era of like you know just say no drugs are bad weeds like heroin you know all this shit's gonna mess you up it's not to be touched very like you know minnesota midwest type of mindset i know you're from colorado and experienced some stuff or from florida but yeah, you know, yeah. lived in colorado you kind of yeah. understand that midwest mindset so yeah it's a little different than you know you hit i moved to seattle didn't know a soul and then immediately was like oh they got medical out here like try, got a job at a grow store like just was like dude i this is playland to me a kid from midwest like all mm -hmm. this openness and ability to like do kind of more good what you yeah super yeah a lot of good i think to me that's where the hash game started really this new era of hash kind of got pushed heaviest up in seattle with like the glass blowing culture and the hash culture and how much those kind of come together to create this you know overall cannabis hash culture that we have this kind of niche within the niche mm -hmm. of cannabis so yeah it's very interesting it's random, but is that where Mothership's based out of? Or no? They're in Bellingham, and okay. then there's a lot of dudes, uh, Seven Point Studios. Like, I went to Seattle. I went to school in Seattle, like the city, and I lived always right by Seven Point, and that's where, like, Swiss Perk was, Quave, uh, Storm and Norman. Um, yeah, a bunch of people who just kind of made, like, these wild, crazy, heady pieces from, like, that era of, crazy glass oh, that like some the, people some of the remember, legends yeah. of glass blowing yeah, yeah definitely yeah. so and they all love good hash undeniably they all love good hash for sure so i was blessed to have had my experiences and kind of my <laughs> beginnings in seattle and then i moved down to cali kind of a bit after i graduated and stuff like that so yeah so you moved with the fam to seattle was mm -hmm. that before you graduated or I moved to Seattle to go to college and my Got parents it. still live in Minnesota. They're out there. That's I just dope. moved to Seattle and didn't literally like showed up first day. I actually missed orientation and everything because I was kind of late. And then, uh, yeah, just went to school, didn't know a soul. Luckily, like, yeah, just met people and was very blessed and lucky to meet the right people and get some good people in my life there that really helped me out along my journey for sure a lot. That's dope. It's a very different jump from Minnesota straight to Seattle, not knowing anybody. Pretty cool. Well, what did you think when you got there, the city? Um, I mean, honestly, like I lived on campus, you know, first year. So it was pretty nice. Had a lot of social culture kind of in there because I'm definitely more of like an introvert. She brings the extrovert out of me, but I'm like definitely the dude that was all throughout college. I wasn't partying much. Like I had my girls going and I was doing my thing and like I was going to water and you know, I had that type of thing going on and I was like, ah, oh, y'all have fun. Like I liked living in a house with other people, but yeah, it wasn't much of the, much of the college, college experience as most people would have it. They're not partying hard, right? Any specialty strains in Seattle hard. at the time that you remember growing that you were like, man, this one. I mean, uh, most people know me for cookies and cream, which is just my hitter that I've been from the gate, like one of my first strains that I was running and had forever. So I'd say that was my, for hash, you know, the one that I remember a lot up there. And then, yeah, I don't know. There's some other stuff, but I wasn't too big into flour. I was always the hash guy. Yeah. Huge shout out exotic genetics, Mike, you know, making bangers, creating bangers from the start. That guy's a legend. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I owe a lot to that cut like a lot to that cut and then dean too the kind of mentor i had in seattle that gifted it to me too and so then you come down to cali after you graduate where do you move to or does it go from there 
Yeah, basically like I was, you know, in the medical days in Washington and as, you know, as you guys probably know, the switchover happened in Washington and Colorado around the same time, a little before Cali and tried to like figure out things there and then decide that, you know, Cali was probably a better place given that like markets were limited to just the state, stuff like that. Cali's a massive market. Hash is definitely a very niche thing, especially like way back then, you know? So, so for me, it made the most sense. My education, I, you know, was in economics and stuff. That was my major in school. So I definitely had a mindset toward markets and business and stuff like that. And yeah, I saw that, you know, Cali's really like the end road to anyone's really like business plan. You want to have your brand pop in and that's like to show you're, you're at the top of the mountain in Cali, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, so you come down to Cali, where do you move to in Cali when you start to do work? It's straight into like up North or what? Yeah, I move, I get a property, uh, in outside of Santa Rosa. So in Sebastopol area and originally Sonoma County, I tried to get it licensed. I was going to do like the, you know, like a small cottage license, do my thing there. But Mm -hmm. because of the issues with the County, they changed, you know, the, the zoning and all this stuff. So I ended up pulling my permit and then I was able to find some partners luckily there that, um, allowed me to start a manufacturing up in Southern Humboldt. So we have a shop up there in like Redway Garberville area. If you got, I'm sure y'all oh, yeah. are familiar right in town there. That's dope. So yeah, <laughs> we've been doing since uh, like tw- early 2018, you know, we had the license up there and we've been rocking it. So that's home base. Uh, we live in Sebastopol more and then I'm lucky. I got a, you know, I got a good shop dude up there. A good team, Jay Aero Solventless, who holds it down at the shop for me. On like a production level and then i'm more you know working on the business making sure qc is good and all that but he does an amazing job on that level and runs all the you know i've developed proprietary machinery up there for washing and post-processing and stuff like that so that's kind of been my focus on like the last couple of years on the legal shop and kind of bringing the efficiencies of scale and new technology to the bubble hash game because it really hasn't been been applied we don't have other industries to bring from like bho Mm -hmm. and stuff where you can have these massive systems that have already been engineered and figured out for solvent based extraction stuff like that for other things so it's a very interesting place to be i think i like it a lot it's groundbreaking right now like it's it's like a emerging market that you can almost create and like the guys that are doing it the best and also understand like man why can't i do this or why doesn't do this you'll be the next to invent the products, like you said, proprietary stuff that kind of lead the industry where it's going. You know, the guys that know it best, why not? Right. Yeah. I feel like, you know, I never got to work at that scale before up in Humboldt. We wash like large, large amounts of stuff. So it was very interesting to see like where things really get bottlenecked at scale, where you need to really start improving and like to compete in this very competitive, you know, legal market that we're in now that, It's not 2012, it's not 2015, like nothing really comes easy. You got to make sure everything is hitting super well. Every box is checked, everything goes super well. And even then you might just only break even basically. It's nice because you coming from a side of the hash industry that you know what the top tier quality hash is, and then to work at scale to say, okay, let's not lose this quality, but now let's figure out how to scale it compared to someone coming in that just says, Oh, this is how it's done. All right. Now times a hundred or like, let's just use these massive stainless steel wall, you know, whatever it is, it, it's cool to see you coming from a known quality side and now stepping into that so that we don't lose that part of the industry. I yeah. mean, huge. So you guys meet and then how does it spark from there as far as like, you know, give us the rundown. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> did I did think, girls in green start before you guys met? Oh yeah, yeah. wait. He oh. met wait, me wait, through wait. girls in green. Yeah. So okay. he followed oh. girls in green, and I actually mapped all the hash makers, all the people that were, had a brand and that were doing something out here because I wanted to learn. So we followed each other, like we knew about each other's work. And then he figured out I was in Humboldt, living at Sunshine's Farm, and he had the shop already in Humboldt. Mm-hmm. So he messaged me saying, nice. "Hey." What's up? You know, I actually scrolled all the way just to see. Yeah, one day we were like, who messaged first? Because we weren't sure. So we went all the way back on the DMs. And he was always like, probably you. You're the outgoing one. How long did you have to scroll? A while. You know, it wasn't that long. Like, you know, but he was like, oh, 
I bet it was you because you're the outgoing one. And no, it was him. Yeah. He messaged first. <laughs> yeah, it was. Nice. Yeah. But he, I mean, the idea was for us to meet up. I wanted to learn how to use the freeze dryers. And uh, so we met. He picked me up at Sunshine's farm. That's a funny story. Sunshine had a husband at a time. And then I told, <laughs> I told uh, her ex-husband, Eric, I was like, oh, I'm going to meet this guy and stuff. And then he, they gave me like pepper spray. Because, I mean, it's not a thing yeah. in Humboldt, you know, to send your ad, the address from sketch, the farm yeah. to just like for someone to pick you up. Some no, up the hill. It was but we had, we, had a gl we had a person Bill. that was common yeah. that actually Take was this. okay for both of us, which was Joey. Yeah, Joey Burger. So Joey made us to Khalifa Legend. Faith. Jo Joey Burger from Humboldt. It left from, it was, used to be, what's the name of the shop? Humboldt Dream. The Humboldt local is his Instagram. No, I but know, no. But the shop he has. Oh, Trim Scene. Trim Scene Solutions. Yeah, legendary yeah. spot in Southern Humboldt. And he ran a huge farm out there. It's been Okay, the stuff. Trim yeah. Scene. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> you talked to Joey before you came uh -huh. to pick me up, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, who is it? You know, uh -huh. who, who is this girl over here living at Sunshine's? Like, he's like, well, if she's living at Sunshine, she's got to be pretty like legit because Sunshine doesn't, you know, she doesn't just let anybody around. You know, Actually, she does not. It was very weird that she let me in. I don't know what yeah. happened. We just like connected. Yeah. But yeah, she doesn't let anyone like like trimmers and people like live in her house or anything like that. And she like yeah, welcomed we me with open arms. Them other type of houses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no other type of houses was that. Yeah. Exactly. No, but it's true. Like it's they, a closed scene in Humboldt. Uh -huh, you know, definitely. just live on. Come no, to people just come and, pop up though. Y they do. Town. Yeah, for work and shit. Oh yeah, but yeah. You, know. you don't have them to the farm until you trust. So that's how. Depends no, on the farm. Yeah, really depends on the farm. Some yeah, people hang out. On the farm. Some people yeah. hang out in front of Safeway, like asking for. I mean, they used to back in 2015, 16, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, to 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 pop in Sunshine's farm, you need like, you needed like a connection she or something. Wasn't like that. She wasn't like that type of like cultivator. It's too different. Uh, now that you guys have lived up there for a while, a little, what do you think the coolest thing about living up there is? Up uh, north, you know, in Santa Rosa. I mean, basically in the the, the Emerald Triangle. Yeah. yeah, we we used to live like I used to live in Humboldt. Yeah, full and then, time, like Humboldt, Humboldt, Southern Humboldt. What's the coolest thing Benbo. about living in Humboldt? <laughs> the Bimbo Inn, baby. Uh, <laughs> literally, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, literally right Stones there. Throw, man. Golf not there. <laughs> no, honestly, no. But we lit right on the golf course, bro. My car is my uh, car got hit by a golf course. Holy ball. shit! My terrible. car, the goat ranch. my car window is still broken. I know. From from, yeah, from no. that, they still owe us for that. Yeah. Hey, Benbo in, get out. No, but I, I said the Benbo in. <laughs> the me. most the most special thing about Humboldt, besides yeah. all the people and the weed that are that it's grown there, it's actually the redwood trees. Yeah. I will say that I made a wish. That's dope. On the avenue of the giants, I said in twenty fifteen, it's twenty seventeen. I drove through the avenue of the giants and i was so amazed by it and then i just looked up at the sky and i said i want to live here and then next year guess where i was living literally on a street they would take a ride from the avenue of the giants and that's where i was living at sunshine's house so they answered that's, the trees yeah. answered my call there's heavy energy in those trees man <laughs> there like is. those old forests it's, are it's mystique no yeah. joke and we met there first time too our first yeah. like joint that we smoked together was uh -huh. in the redwoods no, That's the nice. first the first couple times we met, we didn't, you know, we just literally the whole time talked about hash. Because for me, I looked at this girl's like, dude, this girl's been to Morocco. She's gone up in the mountains to see what's going on there. Like for me, that's a dream. Like this white kid from Minnesota who never travels or never really gets to go outside of like, you know, I'm, I'm dipping my head in grow rooms. I'm setting up new grows. I got my blinders on because yeah. I'm just like Cali what's popping fresh frozen you know and i'm not really really always looking back and kind of respecting like where did this come from learning about that and learning about kind of the all the sides of the resin and how that can also add to what i'm doing you know so it was mm -hmm. amazing to like see her and talk to her and like be enlightened to those different like sides of the game for sure yeah when we met it was like a good combo of like the technology and even though I was young, I can't say bring the traditions with me, of course not, but definitely I was more in touch with traditional hash and rolling temple balls and smoking like, you know, like split cured hash. and spliff mm. and things like this. So when tell, we met, it was just like a shroop, you tell know? Tell about you the learned. freezer what, that you found when we, uh, we first met that I had no idea what to do with all this hash. And you're like, oh, dude. <laughs> You so, are, I'm in heaven now. Yeah, I was in heaven like for the first six months. Um, so, okay, so we met in 2017. We went out a couple of times, just hashed it out. 
uh, in 20. 20- <laughs> was it love at first hash or what? <laughs> yeah, it was. I think so. Yeah, yeah. No, I can tell, man. We could have been guys at each other. each other a lot. Yeah. You know? yeah. So we didn't want to get, you know, man, that's, that's the part that doesn't anything. get talked about enough in relationships. Mm-hmm. Respect. That's mm-hmm. what each other wants. Yep. That's what, you know, I'd say both parties is what we want more than even love. It's like, man, this is, even as a friend, right? Am I right or am I? You guys no, are getting you're right. No, I 100% you're right. agree. Touching on something. Very yeah. No, and there are no, multiple ways of respect too. Re- he respect like really their- respects you. You yeah. can feel it, you know, and you, I can feel you really respect him. That's, yeah. that is what makes your relationship like a, you know, a respectable relationship is as simple as that sounds. But I think that's what it's lacking. Why people are having a much harder time with relationships lately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the respect thing. But you guys respect each other through your passion, which is even like deeper, you know? Like most of the time it's like maybe a woman wants to do this, man wants to do this. Two totally different worlds. You know? Hard to come together. I don't know. It's, it's interesting. Like I'm just observing. Two batteries together. You yeah, know? I'm just they observing. Like it's around. it's really cool, you know, to see. And you guys are obviously from two totally different parts of the world. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's cool. The cultural yeah. gap is a little challenging sometimes. Yeah, but yeah. it is. But yeah, that's what <laughs> keeps it easy, fresh, but though. Yeah. Get, yeah, you know, if you were both from Minnesota or both from Brazil, it probably wouldn't work. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. nice. You know, we yeah. were different, and then we completed each other in a way. Mm-hmm. And I mean, of course, in the relationship level, but also in work and uh, education. Attention, rowers, hustlers, trappers, and yes, even you, the cappers. The right carbon filter can possibly save your life. Grow generation. I ran out of vacuum seal bags. It's a Sunday. I need the single-sided or the double-sided all black. Grow generation. Oh, that last mom can't get transplanted because she needs cocoa and you ran out of bags. Grow generation, in store or online. Let them know First Smoke 10. That's the code to get you hooked up. First Smoke of the day sent you, First Smoke 10, Grow Generation. Yo, what up, it's Blackleaf. I'm here at Grow Generation, and guess what? Drip Hydro storm in the market. All the best growers I know are switching to it. And guess what, there's a reason, because it's preserving terps. I keep hearing that, preserving terps. And that's why we're here with Sunshine, facility advisor, facility manager, overall the man with Drip Hydro. Listen to why it's different, man. What's going on, guys? Sunny here with Drip Hydro. Thing is, at the end of the day, we just wanted to make a simple, clean, cost-effective nutrient line that nobody has really seen on the market right now. Nobody uses really our chelation formulas, uh, the micronutrients that we have pulled to make this line is really just what makes it overall bringing that consistency and quality back to what we want to see in growing herb again and overall at the end of the day it's still really light on your wallet it's a five-part nutrient line and again if you're not staying sterile or you have a big facility and you don't want to run rock wool and you want to run a mix of cocoa with an enzyme or something you don't even have to run flow with it so at the end of the day it's just saving you money on your wallet while bringing the consistency and the quality of terps back we wanted to bring the terps back and bring the soul back to grow it. versatility cost effective and quality i mean what else can you ask for drip hydro first smoke of the day black leaf approved peace yo first smoke family what's good go check out dr dabber dr dabber.com use code fsotd go pick up an excess and evo me and biggs are on the excess as well as we got the merch on the site the link's gonna be in the Mood Trays is where we get our merch done. Shout out to Mood Trays, man. MoodTrays.com, FSOTD. This is where you're seeing all the gear, the custom die cut rolling trays, the ash trays. These things are impeccable. They do an amazing job. Quick turnaround speeds, low minimums on the orders as well. Any of you up and coming brands, no orders too small. Go to MoodTrays.com, use our code. You're gonna save more money and they're really gonna take care of you. They're gonna know you're part of the family. Shout out to Mood Trays, man, and uh, let's get it. So he taught me so much about all this new kind of hash, this technology, and how to deal with like freeze dryers and how to handle like the six star and how, like he taught me so much and also on the cultivation thing, like scaling up a little Mm -hmm. bit because I had had knowledge on outdoor and I had knowledge on like super small growths, like Mm -hmm. in Brazil, like we have like six plants, seven plants. But uh, he taught me a bunch about indoor and it was like a very, very good combo. So I came to work together with him on 2018 
and he hooked me up super super because i was uh studying at college of the redwoods i went to do like agriculture that's how i got my visa i was like okay i don't want to stay illegally in the united states i'm gonna even though i have already graduated let me just like hop in like college of the redwoods learn more about agriculture and he had a spot like a house close to the shop mm -hmm. he said alice that spot's empty there's no one there but y'all can you can put a grow up there I can grow our legal six, you know? Your legal yeah, six, yep. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So, yeah. So, put up a grow there, did the, but, uh, some of the, uh, the school. Mm -hmm. And that's when we kind of like first started working together and exchange a lot. Like, we exchanged a lot. So, yeah, a lot I of made him smoke spliffs. Exchange. I learned my spliff <laughs> game from this girl. Let it be known Damn. for sure. No, Any tobacco bad. before that? Not really. I'd smoke blunts, kind of, but paper, mostly all paper gang, you know. And like, man, gave dabbing, right in for you, didn't you know? it? Dude, it's funny because when, <laughs> in, when, uh, when she, when she met me and came to my house, I did. I never had people to my house before. It was like mm -hmm. before her, like it three so people have been it. to my house ever. You know, <laughs> I'm that weird grower guy. So it is what it is. But my, uh, the year previous, the fires had made the power go out. We got evacuated from the house. I lost a freezer. Fresh frozen that just molded went bad, but I also had all this hash that greased out and like kind of caked out. And then for me, like <laughs> I'm in Cali, I'm working with the like people who that only want paradise. you know very specific, loose, well kept stuff. So I like had been sitting in the freezer, and then she just was like, "I'm like, oh yeah, here's some like this stuff showing her." And she's like, "What's this?" I'm like, "I don't know, just stuff I don't know what to do with. Like it's crap. I don't know. It's from a seed run I did. Oops, sorry, seed run I did. So it was like all these different phenos, like ninety you first. Like I was trying to really get good that data land on mine, everything. Flynn. Oh that my land god! I can't cut. believe I lost that cut. Yeah, oh my god! I just made a huge party on the freezer. You know, yeah. For the yeah. next like four to six months, I just spliffed out. <laughs> blew, everyone blew my mind too. Oh, the ninety, the one hundred and twenty. Yeah, of just all this like turp beautiful sticks. I call them, bro. She was just smoking spliff after spliff out of it. Yeah, yeah and Sharon, Ooh. of course, you know, sharing with me, sharing game. Like she, you know, from Brazil, they have this spliff culture where they kind of have this like kit where they have the bowl, the scissors, like their tips. She start. She comes from a harm reduction background, so she's like been pushing like long filters for a while just to help with like reducing the harm from smoking stuff like that so oh i like yeah. that yeah that's, that's really cool that's the sound of when i used to wake up <laughs> yeah no this is unreal <laughs> I, man. I like, dude a lot of first time so when you guys got together <laughs> uh -huh. having her over uh-huh spliffing yeah dude yeah. what's worse that's awesome. the nebula is interesting yeah of course man <laughs> yeah. i'm so blessed to have this woman in my life put me on cool. on game expanding my horizons you know for sure we're both blessed come on i'm really digging the harm reduction with the mm -hmm. long foot like that i'm really digging that like this not is, enough people touch on that she's really about it's, it like i'm gonna tell everyone right here right now cannabis is not 100 percent harmless thank you it is not thank you what do you it mean? is not it is not. And they've done good studies. And if, if you want to, you know, look into it more, there's some, you know, podcasts that go into that. Right. But it's not. And like, you got to, you know, you talked about a tolerance break too. Yeah. And yeah. Be I, aware. I, I can, you need it be for aware. medical I can purposes. be in touch with two things. If you like, y'all allow mm -hmm. me to That'd talk about awesome. this. First, like it's like my background is totally on harm reduction, even though I graduated in psychology and in Brazil, I have a license to practice. Like I can have patients and things like this. When I graduated, I'm like, I'm way more aligned when working with harm reduction than psychology itself. Like I, I, tr I, I'm like, besides a hash maker, I'm like a professional trip sitter. I did that. I do that for like 10 years already since yeah. I was oh, 19. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. With like harm reduction groups of, all over the world too. What type of medicines Psy are? Most, mostly Psytrance festivals, electronic music festivals. So we have a harm reduction crew that will actually be there to do drug checking. To, do, to hold space when people are like tripping their balls out and try to just like be there for them and help wow. them through that experience and also do educational work because there's like, yeah. it's divided, right? You do the drug checking, you do the educational work, like you discuss openly about substances with like no, how do I say that in English? Prejudice? Yeah. Like with no mm -hmm. prejudice, like a very open, like anti, like not a prohibitionist, you know, right. like mindset. Non-judgmental. Non-judgmental. And um, yeah, so I 
I have this background. So that's the idea on the tips too. So when I started Girls in Green, the project in 20, let's <clears throat> say 2015 that I started Girls in Green. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we, I brought all this harm reduction knowledge that I already had from other substances to start discussing harm reduction in cannabis. Because yeah, people romantize the plant. And the plant is amazing and the plant can do a lot for you. But also the plant will show you the truth. Like you might not have a good time. I had panic attacks already after fucking smoking weed, you know. I took a fucking huge, like super hot dab when I didn't know how to use a slurper and I did not have a good experience. And we oh. should talk about things like that too, <laughs> you yeah, know? That was a crazy oh God, bike know. day. <laughs> that was a crazy bike day. Imagine, imagine <laughs> 10 oh years Lord. ago, this guy introducing BHO dabs you off like a, a spoon. <laughs> of a spoon. Oh, like man. the swing. The I love little, it. You know. I used to put, like, it was like, oh, stop running off, heat it back up. The yeah. hash master cuts. I had glass blowers Crazy. making tubes. Like, you can make one that's like this from this and, you know, and figuring that whole thing. I mean, that was the beginnings. That's all. What, that was the best thing we had seen up until that point where we were making bubble hash. But then we didn't know what to do after that. So a lot of times we'd make great bubble hash and then let it dry out and almost turn it into like a brown keef or it would be rolled but it just the freeze dryer took things to like a whole new level or it molded and then if yeah. it molds and you smoke it's not a harm reduction strategy yeah right so you have to bring like the harm reduction to the table and and apply it in every different kind of setting and see what works out so we need to talk about harm reduction in cannabis which can be use mm. using long tips using like when we smoke spliffs i wouldn't smoke a spliff without a filter if you go to Europe, people literally roll, a, they, they break down a whole cigarette and they might re-roll the cigarette with like some sprinkle of hash on it and then not use a filter. So there, need, there are strategies that actually we need to think about when we're consuming this plant that we love so much. And sometimes it's even like how much we're smoking. Is it making us feel good? Does it make sense? How's your mental health? Like, how do you do without cannabis? Like, how's your life without it? You know? Please talk about that for the people in the comments section. Yeah, <laughs> it's, a mental health. it's a reflection in themselves, right? Yeah, it Whatever is. The shit and the plant's going to show you the truth. Like if you're not feeling good, the plant's going to like, you can use that to ch try to block stuff. But in, I would say that at least in my life, the plant never lets me block anything. The plant will always, if I'm anxious and I smoke, I'll be more anxious. You know, there are times in my life, phases in my life that I get more anxious. So I need to tune down. Like I've been smoking some CBD booth lately, you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> like hemp move just to like smoke something because i can't smoke the amount i want of thc because sometimes it might not make me feel good and it's okay we we can be okay to talk about it and have those phases but it just has to be talked and something that i don't see i don't see people using the word harm reduction and cannabis together here and they should be talked about because also cannabis can be used as a harm reduction too especially when you think of other other like different drugs and different consumptions cannabis can be a tool to help out mm -hmm. um so i mean i can go on days about harm go, reduction yeah, boys. Go into it like for real because i've never we've never even heard on the topic no harm right because what never. do you think when of I harm reduction her, here I I'm like, wait, what? she blew my right mind away, with this like, concept wait, what's that about yeah. And the fact that you did that on you know for people at festivals and i was like that's crazy and on the streets like, who, too who, who, yeah Brazil. that's that it, like that's even crazier because it's like who who even knows what they're on and you're yeah. going through that with them so it's like you know and that's one of the biggest things people don't know what they're on right yeah so how do you crazy. how do you take care of people and how do you okay so quick example so boom festival one of the biggest festivals in europe citrus festival festival in portugal i took this guy yeah. like yeah, I took yeah. This guy yeah. Like, last year yeah. no this girl's this guy been lived life last year he yeah. lived life with me because we were not growing yeah <laughs> hell yeah good so we went all the festivals we did burning man boom festival oh hell yeah Versa Paralelo, big burning, festival man. in brazil incredible really yeah i yeah. loved it it was very nice yeah. it's just tough on the smoke you can't really smoke everywhere but boom festival like a few years ago if you check out there, they have like an amazing harm reduction project because harm reduction is an accepted like way of taking care of people. And in Portugal, drugs are decriminalized. So w w if you are a drug user, you're not inside the criminal sphere. I don't know if I said this right. Yeah, but you did. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. So if you're a drug user, you're not inside the criminal sphere. So um, 
boom festival, big harm reduction group, drug checking. And then they had like two or three cases, if I'm not mistaken, of people that supposedly took LSD. And I want to say like, how do you say this? In quotations. In, in quotation, yeah. LSD, because it was not. Mm -hmm. um, and they were like tripping their balls out. They were having a very hard experience. Well, we also can call a bad trip, even though a bad trip can be something important for you, can be somehow of a good trip. But um, 12 hours later, the trip was not wearing off. And you're like, okay, if it was LSD, they should Holy be like shit. wearing off. Like, yeah. What's going on? So the, the harm reduction drug checking crew caught the fact that they had a substance that is like an analog to LSD that is called DOX. And DOX can last up to 36 hours. And it's Whoa. way more toxic also than LSD. So sometimes someone thinks they're taking a substance and they use the harm reduction strategies for that substance, but it's not that substance. And that's all due to prohibition. Because with prohibition, we have like lack of quality control. So they don't know what's going on. Also with prohibition, we have this, all these new people that want to create like new compounds and new molecules that will be analogs from other substances that have not been widely studied, that we don't know short-term effects, long-term effects. So it's all new. So harm reduction is like you dancing with the music, you know, and having to figure it out what, what's going on, on and having to take care of people. Then I don't know if I want to say like dancing with the music, or like dancing with the wave, the way it goes, you know, you have to improvise, you have to um, create strategies, you have to be creative and you have to be very respectful also. I don't know. We're talking serious psychedelics. Like that's insane. Like you can't really trust drugs anymore these days at all. Exactly. Like who's really buying drugs and testing their drugs? Not, not many people. There I'm are sure, some. I'm the sure. festival they have. But there's a culture. About your there is a culture that's informed, right? But it's like, man, that's the minority. Most people are just like. Consuming. That's why we need to educate. It's crazy. And imagine yes. you thought you got LSD and you got this DOX or whatever it is. And it goes 30. So like, just that, yeah. I mean, that could, that could alter your whole life's path. Yeah. Exactly. That could get you or, fired or from your job. Seriously. And yeah. Or in that can you're feel it. fentanyl right now. It's like they're say. finding it in cocaine. They're finding to where there's people that like once or twice a year will go to a concert and be like, I'd like to do a you know, like a, yeah. a very recreation. And I know guys that will then like test the, the whatever substance, but yeah. it's like, these are guys that have businesses and like are small. This is the only other time I've ever heard someone young, bring it up. Young it's people are so no important. Clue. No, no especially clue. now. So fentanyl, I don't want to say the number because I'm not with Google right now or my chat GPT to figure it out. But the amount of people that die out of like fentanyl overdoses the last like three years in the United States, it's insane. And there are two issues with that is the fact that it either gets cross contaminated with another substance. So the drug dealer will carry the, I mean, multiple substances and keep them together and it can get cross contaminated. And with fentanyl, it's not a joke when they say like a grain of sand can kill you, something like that. Like it's, it's such a small amount that can cause an overdose that it's insane. And, um, well, where I was going, I was like on fence, like go totally going there. So the issue, deaths. what? The amount of deaths. And no, the, the, deaths. Amu the amount of deaths. And, uh, we just think about harm reduction as a tool when people are dying and it shouldn't be like that, you know? Like we need harm reduction strategies for fentanyl. We need everyone testing their d drugs. If, if they're not testing it in a like a legal place like they have in Europe and like Spain, like they have energy control, like if people want to research that project. It's amazing. They're a project in Spain. They're subsidized also by the government. The government helps them out and they have like machines that actually will give you accurate data on what substance is that on. Okay, this is MDMA, but it's also cut with that and with that and with that. And there's that percentage of this and that percentage of this. But yeah. and that's. That's tough because we still live in prohibition here in the United States. So most of the projects don't have that, the, the access. Even like Dance Safe, that is a project from here that actually lives in Denver, lives in California. They only deal with like reagents, like drug checking reagents. But that also, it already helps. Like, hey, everyone, if you're listening to this podcast and you're taking a substance here in the United States, buy a fentanyl test strip, please, like for real. 
Like that can save your ass. That can save your life. That can save your friend's life, you know? And it's not because I'm trying to be, oh, like this lady is being so careful and stuff. No, it's not because it can save your life. Mm -hmm. We have no yeah. control on how those substances are made. And I don't trust anyone. And I don't trust any drug dealer. And not, it's not because they're drug dealers. It's because it's just like- They don't like, even know what they got. Sometimes they don't even know mm -hmm. what they got. And Most sometimes the they don't have the education to well, understand that cross-contamination can also cause death. Mm -hmm. So it's just like a, it's a big deal. It starts, I mean, it starts way up the chain, right? And yeah. things just happen. And most of the street dealers don't know what the, they're just running. They don't know what the hell they're doing. So it's just crazy to think about like, you know, other than weed, like you, you know, even like pills, the counterfeit pills, like it's just insane. It's in everything. And I love that yeah. she so, brought it now to weed where it's like, it doesn't yeah. need to end with that. It's like long filters, you know, yeah, what take, type of what, filter. What else? What other things can people do to, you know, shout out harm, harm reduction for, you know, cannabis so, smokers? Shout out Bembolado, which is the company that actually allowed me to create this project. And uh, just to show this to you. So for me, harm reduction is about education, right? Because you cannot like, you cannot measure education because you teach your pair and your pairs will teach their pairs and their peers and it would just multiply and then it can save someone's life one day, you know? It Especially, will. Yeah. So um, this company allowed me and my project to actually start discussing and putting the uh, a light on the word harm reduction. So you will open this tip and then we will have harm reduction strategies. Like don't hold the smoke. Like don't like keep the, you know, the end of the joints, the roaches. Mm -hmm. Like, well, in prohibition, we keep that thing you know and then we make a joint out of that and that it's not amazing because it's super toxic right especially us that smoke with tobacco and my stuff. dad needs this because my dad will take a hit and then hold it in as long as he can and i'm like we have like a three and a half gram joint rolled up like you you can literally just take a I mean, and he just, every time, it's like an old school thing. It's totally, no, when I smoked with my mom the first time she did that, I was like, where did you get that from, mom? <laughs> I'm like, you don't need, and then there comes the lady the, the, in harm reduction and saying, mom, you just need 3.5 seconds to expose your lungs, you know, to the cannabis smoke to get high. All the extra seconds you expose your lungs to that is just like exposing your lungs to toxic, to toxic substances. Yeah. They are caused through the combustion. So you don't need to do that to get high. It will cause you like a certain sensation that you think you're getting higher, but it's just the lack of oxygen. Mm. It's like literally you holding your breath. And they and say make that, you feel a little they, they said that that's a fact now over 2000 studies is that um, cannabis, frequent cannabis users have less, um, I think, blood flow in their brain. I have never uh, seen this one. Okay, okay, that's new research. Yeah, okay, that's, that's interesting. It's interesting to, to look at how they structure so these studies wanna, too. Uh, Uberman it Lab, is. episode 92, the effects of cannabis, marijuana on the brain and body. He goes in great depth. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also is uh, Tom Ballou. I got to see which That's cool which though, episode. because the more you're educated with, with whatever it is, the better off you are using it appropriately or like how you are, where you're like, well, my endocannabinoid system needs a recharge. You know, for my basically Re like a reset use. also yeah. for tolerance. Yeah. I love that you actually just, you care enough. A lot of people, like I know us, like even me, like, I mean, I smoke and I smoke all the time and I'm a <laughs> grower. So I'm always trying, I, I smoke all day, every day. So it's cool now though, where I'm about to turn 40 that like to think about stuff like this and start to participate more actively in like, okay, where are you going from here? And how, what's the longevity in this, right? You're not exactly. 20 just rolling with the flow anymore. Like you want to make sure also what you're utilizing, whether it's cannabis or not, is as pure as it can be towards what you're going for. Exactly. And what, what are you eating? Where does mm. it come from? Or is it grown organically? Is it not? Is it not? Like harm reduction can just spread to like all of these like different kinds of strategies, but it all wraps up in caring caring about yourself caring about the others and actually making decisions that actually will align with what you want for yourself mm -hmm. and it can be for real like harm reduction accepts everything can even if you want to smoke crack smoke crack but is there a safer way for you to smoke can you like maybe not split the pipe with someone else 
can you like you will find a way you know and not that i want to compare crack to cannabis mm -hmm. right now because they're totally different substances but um same thing for cannabis like we just had covid and what about sharing joints what are the strategies to just like reduce the transmission of like a, a couple like in diseases infections so there's always a way to take care of yourself and uh definitely my friends make fun of me that i'm the responsible stoner they they joke like chelsea from puffco she's just like don't harm reduction me alice you know? <laughs> <laughs> i want 100 percent of the harm please yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? we'll take a no that's cool what what do you got Tom, Tom Ballou, um it's dr daniel amen and if you go to timestamp 48 53 change your brain change your life these hacks will improve your brain that's the description of it but if you go to timestamp 48 53 it talks about your brain on marijuana and some of the things that he said in that it just hit me and i was like oh damn mm -hmm. i didn't know that and then the more you know it's like now i have to consider that because now i know <laughs> And it's just like, damn, that's, Overall that's something that doesn't, um, it's basically shows that it ages the brain way faster. Cannabis use, frequent cannabis use. Yeah. I'm definitely an old head, you know, and to, the, <laughs> and to them, frequent cannabis use is like a few hits a day. Yeah. So imagine the more you smoke that the, the theory smoke is like zips a day though. I've been reading the that like you microdosing brain. cannabis and actually microdosing THC is like a good it's a it's mm -hmm. a good strategy but well it's tough i like to microdose mushrooms but we i also like to smoke a lot i'm yeah. i'm tuning down a little bit right now well it's it's on mushrooms too it's like man you really want to smoke a lot of weed i like <laughs> it one of my favorite combos <laughs> chain smoke it's yeah. crazy your lungs are stop, like stop uh -huh. the steel all of a sudden yeah. it's really weird when, uh -huh. when we sat down with mila the hash queen right and one of the questions she put it so eloquently but we had asked her like why hash you know over flowers and she had just like such a great like matter of fact answer i wish i could say it like her but it she was basically saying like all that extra plant material like why why do you need it and we were it was the way she said it you were just like okay you know but uh it was just when i think of you guys and you and you know mila as well and you guys have spent time with her like it, it's it's just a great eloquent way of putting like hash is the essence so here's the essence so the rest is like extra if you want it you know and shout out to mila because she's like she for us women she opened up the path for us to go there she's a big inspiration and i'll mm -hmm. definitely I'll, I'll i'll put a boy here on the table too mila and Fran if you weren't for mila and frenchy of course or flynn too but if it wasn't for mila and frenchy i wouldn't even meet flynn probably you know i just like put a lot of love for them um they are like amazing, amazing, amazing people. And they open up the path for us to study and they brought education to another level, you know, mm -hmm. it is special. Yeah. The people that break through the doors always kind of have the most friction. So they like to think what they had to go through, what she had to go through and to build a company and a brand and travel and explore hash and hash making, it was even more static than now, right? You got more resistance. You had to know more people that were cool with you. You know and things were worth even more money so the risk was higher it's like the same with the risk on getting caught and so it's just a, it's it's cool to appreciate people that came before us and i know with you guys like the quality of hash you guys are multiple multiple award-winning hash makers you know not like one or two like if if you guys were boastful on your profile on instagram it would have like metal after metal you know yeah and there was one more this year actually which was mila's hash queen I got first place also with the grape guest at Dabadu. Yeah, the right. Hash right. Queen. Where no, was Barcelona? No, in, Bar in, in Barcelona. I didn't okay. compete in Chile. With the Hash Queen so it's category. Chile, it's not in Colombia, right? I mean, Dabadu happens a bunch of countries in South America. Mm -hmm. yeah. We actually did Dabadu Brazil yeah. for the first time last year. <laughs> yeah, it was very awesome. nice. So there's Dabadu Peru, there's Dabadu Colombia, Dabadu Chile, Dabadu. <laughs> yeah we had a debate about that. yeah we debated a little, a little side bit yeah. okay he thinks also, I, he was in chile he's like no i mean it was colombia it was both was like, yeah, yeah it's, it's a south so american they tour yeah decision. they did a whole tour, <laughs> they, they, a whole tour. they did a whole tour man it was super cool now but i got that win wow. in barcelona right now it's a and draw. then i got like it's so nice we got like a little thing like the hash queen i was like fuck dude i will remember this forever is you that know? open to the public like if if someone wanted to fly down and attend dabadu can they do that so oh, dabadu yeah. is a cup that is 
for me that came out of Brazil and took some time to connect and to be able to engage and start producing, you know, uh, Dabadu is like a nice step in because it's not a cup like the Ego Clash that you get invited because you're already a either well-renowned or well-known hash maker or someone wants to put you on the table over there. But Dabadu, you pay to get in. Mm -hmm. So you pay a judge's kit. So with 200 euros or something like that, the first time I went to Dabadu, you just like get to judge your first cup. So it's very nice in a way, but it's also challenging in another way because it's less, less, you know, like less things that you have to try it out and whatever. Like it makes it a little challenging, but it's just like an amazing cup, especially for you to start like connecting with the people, connecting with the crew and anyone can attend an event like that. They just have to pay their judges kit or they have to like sign up to be a, comp a competitor. What's cool about that is <clears throat> wherever country it's in, you get to try hash, like a bunch of local hash from that country. Like that's what's awesome is like, if you wanted to dive into like what's going on in South American hash making, you tend through two or three different countries of that. You'll know the growers, the hash makers, what one. You, I mean, the connections are limitless if that's where you want to go with it. It's really cool. Like Dabadu Brazil was definitely like all, all traditional hash. That's it was awesome. nice. Bunch of temple balls, like mm -hmm. pressed hash. Like it was like beautiful. I love to see it. Like some people from here might go there and say, oh, this is all this like, you know, non-quality, whatever. I just thought it was so beautiful to see that the culture over there and the quality that people are searching for also in Brazil is within the traditional hash making strategies and, and techniques. I, I love that. I think it's amazing. We enjoyed when we went to Amsterdam. We got given some really good OG hash and a few other like traditional hashes and we were rolling worms, putting them inside a, you know, basically hash holes. And we enjoyed the hell out of it, man. Like really yeah, good I hash. Wherever you're at, I mean, that's the whole point. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. is the, you know, do, Tell them about do, Morocco, do what babe. the people are doing there. Tell them about Morocco this year. Uh, man, yeah. That's got, I heard that's a dope place to go. Incredible. My boy went there and was like, wow. No, absolutely incredible. I was blessed enough. She had been before, and then we went to Spain last year, and she brought me over to Morocco. We went to Tangier, like that's, you know, on the tip near Spain, so has a lot of international influence. And then we also went to Chef Chauin, which is more inland and more like... It's Arab the mountains. Yeah, mountainous, more Arabic, Berber culture, more native North African, a little less French and Spanish influence and stuff. And it's the blue city, so it's got like all these crazy blue buildings in the mountain. It's incredibly beautiful. Everyone is super nice there. Like I was actually like mad impressed because I'd only ever really traveled much in what you know Western society. So it was very a long way from Minnesota. A long way from Minnesota yeah, for up. sure. Straight up, <laughs> that's but, crazy. No, it was incredible because you could just drive like up into the mountains outside of Chef Shown and see like literally like hundreds of hundreds of acres of weed all along the valley, and it, the, everyone was so. It's so like open and accepted that like you just pull over on the side of the road, like start checking some plants out. Somebody comes they out, if they're the there, hash. they're like, hey, how you doing? Like, come to my house, have some tea, check some hash oh, out. Yeah, like, bro. bro, it's incredible. It, opened, yeah, it gave there. a new breath to me because yeah. in this grind we're yeah, in in Cali, like to us. have that type of. Let's go. No, that'd that'd be awesome. Awesome. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I've always thought about it more. This girl knows, and she knows. So so she's got us? the. That that she's dope. just like got this innate, natural ability to like connect lead. with people anywhere she goes and mm -hmm. lead and and feel the vibes of like who's really there, you know, there with good intentions and not. She's super good and knowledgeable about like traveling and very conscious of that type of stuff. So I'm blessed because I have no experience in that. I'd and say I that never made it there on my own by any means. I'd say that like traveling like for a couple of years, like by myself, like all around the world and looking for hash and wanting to search more for hash. Like I learned how to listen to my intuition like a lot. I don't want to be a hippie here and saying like, listen to your guts and whatever. But I'm sure that like I, I take a breath and I align myself and I figure out if what I'm doing is the right thing for me to do at the moment. Because when you're a girl traveling by yourself or only w within women, because my first time in Morocco was literally like me and my two homies, one of my two best friends, and they're so pretty. They're like blonde and blue eyes. And I was so afraid of traveling with them to Morocco because I was like, no, my friends are too pretty. 
you know, to, so I can travel with them to Morocco. Oh, you as well. But in the end, it was weird because they liked me more because I look a little Arabic. They're like, oh, no, these ladies are like the gringas, you know, this girl, <laughs> like, they, they try to, like, get me for camos, like, the first time I was there. <laughs> the guy, and I was like, what am I going to do with all these camos, you know? It, it was interesting too. You guys didn't even offer me hash. I'm like, fuck. You know? no, it, was, it was interesting too. To uh, you would make a couple comments when we were there last time, like how different your ex people would treat you and your experience in a way because you were with a man that time. Because oh, I was with my husband. When I said I'm Almost married with the open. husband, mm -hmm. you know, they changed uh, the vibe. But yeah, yeah, like Morocco is like an amazing place, and it's nice that Flynn mentioned like um, when you go outside of Chef Shawan and you see like all those farms they're all small plots of land it's all like small like doop, doop, yeah. doop, each one from a different farmer yeah. and it's very nice to see like the small small scale production also of course if you go up on top of the mountains there is like huge grows and huge scale a bunch of people that actually own clubs in barcelona they also own plots of land in morocco mm. so they grow all their different strains in Morocco and they and it makes its way to Barcelona to be um put in the clubs and the associations out there but where we were it was more like the natives you know and small plots of land little less quality undeniable uh, but it was just like very nice to see like small families like living from that and it's yeah. just beautiful <clears throat> So you it land was, in Morocco and like that's dope. What's the what do you what's breakfast like? What's walk us through like? Oh a, my god! Incredible and then drive food. up into the mountains. Like walk us through a little day. So well, food yum yum, very good. Yum yum, <laughs> food's yum yeah? yum. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for the meat yeah. eaters, is even more. I like yeah. I I we we're pescatarians, both of us, so it's a, li a little bit more challenging. But a uh, bunch of potato and vegetables. But their olive oil is insane. Yeah. So just like the bread with olive oil is amazing. Their cheese, they have like fresh cheese like all the time too. It's also very amazing. Tagine, baby. Tagine. That tagine. Well, you leave Morocco like, ooh, I ate a lot of tagine, which is like this, that, how do you explain that? Like a, that vegetable? Uh, they potato, do like, yeah, like, it's like in a ceramic pot and they mm -hmm. cook it like a stew kind of. And it's, yeah, it's like one of the most traditional cook. dishes there. They have them like ready to go kind of like for the day and they're like, warmed up and you know like cooking and then they just pull them as needed and stuff okay so, lots yeah. of mint tea yeah, and not tea. like baggy like tea like <laughs> real fresh. mint, real fresh mint lots of sugar to too. they also love yeah, they definitely. also love sugar but yeah i remember like first year that i was there and i visited the first farm so i got very mad that day because i was supposed to have a connection from frenchie because uh, i'm actually i was actually friends with frenchie and i just just want to share a lot of love i love your frenchie forever rest in peace rest in peace yeah. um give me a second oh sorry i still get emotional yeah um so i was supposed to go there like with the connection from him and actually that guy traveled so i was like fuck i'm here with my friends like by myself in morocco and i can't like go home without like visiting a farm so when we rented the car and we went to Chef Shao and me and my girls, we went there for tourism in Chef Shao and like to visit the waterfalls. There are deep blue waterfalls yeah. around Chef Shao and amazing water, amazing hikes, amazing views. It's just like amazing. Y'all have to go. Yeah, yeah we have to go. Yeah, that sounds you can insane. stay in Tangier's Riyadh, incredible. Like, all beautiful and stuff like yeah. that. Y'all have to Dude, go. Dude, you can. Yeah. But that time, like I, um, so I didn't get the connection and for women to go up, up on top of the mountain, it's kind of impossible. So I didn't go as, as up in the mountain as I wanted, but we, me and my girls rented a car. And when we were driving back to the water from the waterfall, instead of driving through the main road, we drove through the back road. And then it's where, when we saw all the farms and I just looked at my girls and I said, yo, we gotta go. And they're like, no, no, no. I was like, man, if y'all don't want to go, I'll go. And they're like, no, you can't go by yourself. I was like, so let's all go. <laughs> and they came with me. And when you go in a farm, like they literally call you. They're like hanging out in the front, like smoking their pipe and stuff. And they will call you. And then the three ladies hopped in and um, we went inside and it wasn't the time to like make hash. So we would just, I actually, that, that day I learned how they pack their, their eggs, their famous Moroccan eggs. I learned how they pack it properly um because i well we purchased like a few of like a few like eggs like 10 grams of hash that come like packed in that have y'all seen it like the oh. 
We're gonna have to put some on the screen. Yeah, so can yeah. you can put yeah. it on so the screen, an and that's how people <clears throat> used to transport them. So they will make the eggs, they will swallow it, and then I don't have to like guide you all through what happened the after. There Y'all probably damn. know what happened, but that's yeah. prohibition they and laid an that's egg. Some shit. how people. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, "Hey, you can take a bunch, you can just swallow it." And I was just like, "Hey, I just want to smoke," you know. <laughs> <laughs> they're pushing out there. They're pushing. They're pushing. They're, they're trying to get you to huh? yeah. They're oh. trying. Get oh, you the hu- they're like where are the hustlers at yeah. they, they are like they're so lovely and amazing people yeah, do it no and they are they, like you, you gotta like accept the tea so okay so yeah. me and the girls were in there and yeah. i was like got to dude we have to drink the moroccan tea now what if there's something in the tea because we were only traveling in women so that's something oh, sorry yeah. like we need to think Realistic. of it so okay intuition what does your intuition tell are they you know and then intuition said okay drink the tea you know ask without sugar please <laughs> <laughs> And it was just like a great experience. And just so I can finish on this Moroccan thing, because we went like long on this, but it was very nice because at the time I already knew and I had already done like French's course. So I already knew about French's tech on how to press the tempo balls and stuff. And um, they gave us like a bunch of like unpressed hash, right? Like a bunch of like dry sift that was like kind of like pre-pressed, right? But they, it, they were not with that texture that they actually prepped the eggs with. And the guys were like, so now I'm going to teach you how we press our hash to pack and to make it malleable, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, all right. So they got like 20 grams of hash and uh, they wrapped it up in plastic and they wrapped it up with silver tape. Not the side with the glue, but they wrapped it up with silver tape. And they just started beating that shit with the baseball baseball stick. To start to break the heads up and start And I was like, what? And then I was like, okay, so you're, ta- you're telling me you're pressing it like with the baseball, right? And you're like beating it. So me and the girls, we all beat it and we all had a good time. And then I was like, but what about the temperature? And then the guy threw the ball on my hand and then the ball was like super hot. And I was like, oh, of course, because you're beating it up. And so when you open it, um, I actually have a video from Girls in Green. I can send it from, to y'all after. So when you open, like when you cut that whole plastic up and you open it, all that hash is totally malleable and it's pressed like a tempo ball. So you have the heat and the pressure and the decarboxylation process also happening too. And then it's malleable enough so they can prep the eggs or the peeps to swallow it and take it out of the country, you know? Because that's what happens in Morocco. It's undeniable. I didn't do that though. I just smoked. I promise. (laughs) (laughs) Where do they grow the best product in Morocco? Where's the best hash come from? Is there a certain area in Morocco? I feel like... uh, yeah. Uh, Katama, yeah, and I haven't visited Katama. It's one of my dreams to go, but I'll have to say, due to prohibition, and of course, like super high up the mountain farms, you have to have like plugs and connections to go. And roads are dangerous, and they check your cars, and it's like it's wild, wild style. world. Of- Come on, babe, <laughs> it's not humble style. It's Moroccan style. <laughs> I know, I'm sure. but yeah. Straight up. Reminds me of the check. They might have to reef, check bigs. The reef mountains <laughs> also. They'll probably like, find something on bigs. Chance they usually do. They like, care no, less about the, the Americans. What are you doing carrying that? It's that sounds amazing, spray on them. though. That sounds amazing. Like it's, uh, you know, that's the dream is almost like a, a traveling and being able to see other cultures and how they use cannabis and how they grow it and the techniques that have been passed down to them is one of the most special things out there, in my opinion. I if agree you really too. love something, it's like, where did this come from? How did it get to me? Where is it going past me? Yeah. You know? And actually be humble enough, because even if you're pulling out six star and winning competitions and you, there are people that will go to Morocco and say, oh, this is shitty hash. No, it's not. It's amazing hash. You know, you just have to like find out the appreciation for it because it's just like different. It's like another kind of product. It's totally different. It's like different realms of hash making, different realms of hash world. So it's just very beautiful. Cool. And last year we just bought, like every time we win, we bought a little hash. Yeah, always. So we were like, we made a whole kit on different with different colors, and we had all different qualities. And some were good, some were good, some were not good, some were better than the others. And th- at the end of the trip, we just had this like whole box of like all different like shades of colors of hash, you know, because we just wanted to try it all. Yeah, it was incredible, and it was interesting too for us to like share kind of what we do with people there, and like have that cross cultural thing where we kind of like show them a bit. They were very we impressed. Do, yeah. They're like, what? Yeah. That's awesome. It was humbling for us. Have you done hash washing seminars in different countries or different places? Yeah. 
That's very uh, cool. I started in Brazil, actually. Mm-hmm. And got to have some little ballsy. I've done like but, a couple yeah. classes in Brazil. Yeah, yeah. Through through associations down there. They have a little bit of a medical structure you can talk about and stuff. So. Yeah, so the first class was kind of like, first and okay. second was just, let's do it, you know? And share the, the, and the students that pay the course get the address, and that's how it goes, right? But um, the other ones were more organized because in Brazil, like weed's not necessarily legal in Brazil, but there is some health of a medical system. So we have some associations that can grow cannabis for medicinal purposes. Not flower in Natura, but mo- mostly like oils and stuff. So uh, like tinctures, I mean. Um, so partner up with a couple associations and with a friend's company too that actually the, the production of the event, oh, shout out to Overgrow, love those guys. They have the first like solventless like uh, company in Brazil. They sell like bubble, bubble bags made in Brazil and they sell like all the things that you need to like press hash, make hash and stuff. And we actually produced the first course together and um, using all the, the other course, using the material from the associations or from growers that have a license to grow. So what growers have a license to grow in Brazil? The ones that apply individually for the legislation system with, and they went something that is called habeas corpus, which is, um, it's the same word in English too, but it's a document that proves that even though you're breaking the law, the judge let you do it. Because somehow you have a medical condition that actually improves with like the, your, your ca- cannabis use and you, you got like the approval through the judge to be able to grow your num- specific number of plants because it's all individual, you know, it's subjective to each person. And then you do that. So can't say the course is 100% legal. It's kind of in the gray area. It happens like, you know, uh, because I still have to manipulate the substance in a way. But yeah, courses were made in Brazil and Spain. Um, what else? I think just Brazil and Spain right now. And we're looking at doing some, I think, soon in Cali. Oh, yeah. nice. You know, do I think people yeah. need to keep an eye out. Awesome. A lot of people have been asking online, when are you going to show some love tour. here? So I think, yeah, we're going to try to put something together to really drop like a, like a whole other level of class here in Cali for the, you know, the different level. Because we try to bring it to be applicable to where all types of people. I love that she always comes from this mindset with educating that like, and to me, one of the most beautiful things about solventless hash is like, like she's wrote written articles. You can make solventless hash at home with a coffee filter. Like if you're okay with like getting, just doing it at that level and you want to come from that perspective and just try it a little bit and have fun and like air dried at your house and you're frost free refrigerator freezer and like you know just play around then make some rosin you know whatever you just have your fun plants at home and you want to connect with the resin a bit more and connect with the plant and it's super awesome to see her like switch the light on for people like yo i can actually do this like i i love this stuff that you guys do and at that you know level and like maybe i'll get to that part of my place where i'll have a cold room and all this crazy stuff in a freeze dryer but like yo i can make really nice stuff at home if i just really understand the principles of what i'm doing and apply them well you know so i think that's awesome what it's not like necessarily to do like oh you do this first step for second step and third step it's like understanding really the concept so you can improvise which is what i think it's important because every country the material changes Right. And I don't, not, I don't mean like the plant material. Of course, that changes too, like the plant and stuff. But the material that you're going to have available to make hash changes too. So you, if you understand the concept, you just improvise. You're like, what do I have here in this country available to do that? You know? This girl will make hash anywhere. I've seen her pull out making hash in like a middle of a greenhouse in NorCal, teaching people, <laughs> middle of a club in Barcelona, middle of a somebody's clothing shop in brazil True. just like get it done <laughs> no matter no <laughs> how you know like this girl's about spreading the knowledge and empowering people to like really connect with the plant in a safe way and empower themselves through just like knowledge which i think is incredible yeah Thanks somewhat for letting me out here. passion passion <laughs> that's awesome you deserve it you know what we should do we should all pack up a dab right now of yep. some fire pick one of them out let's do it take a dab what are you, what are you guys preferring on the table that right grape now? gas take the grape gas yeah that grape Ooh, gas where's that grape at gas shout out to here Will. it is shout out all willards right. this a- is insane. alice one 
uh, or got second place in in Spain this last trip at at, at a uh, ego, ego clash with that with that with that resin right there. Congratulations to that. Thank you. Yeah, she wow. killed it. It was a ladies' wash. Me and Vitoria, my homie from Brazil, showing them how it's done over there. I love it. So yeah. while we're taking some dabs of some Wook Sauce Winery's wow. finest, uh, talk. Let's talk about like new age hash making a little bit. Like, uh, you know, any tips for growers, any tips for hash makers that you would say, like, this is what to do or what not to, you know, just some insight into the hash making business I got a, a little bit. I think I got a big one. I think that I see a lot of people really looking over, especially those vertically integrated boys like resin per square foot. Everyone's really focused on those fresh frozen yields, really focused on hitting 5%. 6%, 7%, all these crazy numbers we're starting to hear from all the breeding that's starting to push toward specifically solventless extraction. But you might not realize that, for example, we got a strain Smarties that we used to grow in the past and hopefully we're getting back sh soon. Shout out the homie who texted me just before this, putting a big smile on my face like, yo, I'm with the dude. I'm just you know, trying to put it back together, getting the thing. So hopefully we're going to get that back in the stable, but she only puts out two, two and a quarter percent at best. But when you understand that she throws down on the flower weight and actually compared to cookies and cream that hits five, six percent, when you go the resin per square foot, you're like, oh, really? She only does like 15, 20% less resin per square foot. And that's a flavor. That shit's hitting. That's well worth it to run when you realize, dang, that's not as bad as I thought it was to grow. Cause I'm realizing now, like I got a little more on the processing side, but we all know growing takes a long time. And we all know in this market nowadays, like having those flavors hitting, you got to have those flavors hidden. So if you can bring and understand how to make sense at two and a quarter percenter. Mm -hmm. Wow. You might be bringing something to the table that no one else is even able to even really conceptualize at the moment. So I think little game for all the growers out there when you're doing numbers, don't just think about your fresh frozen yields. It's a factor, but you got to understand your resin per square foot mm -hmm. for sure. I like that too, because we lose meter. so many great strains to hype and to just being focused on some of the wrong aspects like four pounds of light keep it get it pack odds that terpsies that terpsies that terpsies should have won Dave. great gas and dr dabber <laughs> right it's a first placer holy shit it's got the terps so much flavor oh my loud wow Bro, loud yeah, it's, wow. it's very floral which i but it's in a good way like well, that fire too. what's this one else it's the grape gas but it just greased yeah, like a we little got it fresher. fresh, right? So now it's like little the meat, the little meat fresher right now. with the white head still, you know. This is different smoke. Not you know. It hits hard too. Yeah. yeah. This is not like people are think when they're like, oh, grape and this. This is like when it says grape gas, there's a lot of gas behind this grape. Like yeah. mm -hmm. I, I hit it one time and I can't stop but coughing and then hit it again and cough again. Like yeah. you guys crushed it. it with this. Yeah. As a grower, what's one of the best things I can do if I'm going to want to do a hash run? Like I'm going to say I want to collab with Wook Sauce or a company that I know makes great hash. As a grower, what can I do? Because you come from both sides. You you know both very well. Yeah, I think I was, you know, blessed to have that beginning and, you know, understand, I guess, from the gate. Like, I mean, back in the day, you couldn't even get anyone really to freeze material for you. So there was that. I was like, damn, I got to, you know, I love the hash and buying all this trim and stuff is great, but man, I got to figure out how to get some high quality stuff. Cause the homies making that, that over there, like shout out, you know, the, the greener today crew up in Washington, Dean, you know, the people that showed me really what was up back in the day. And like the crew back then that was really putting out fire, you know, I couldn't even get it off them because they were, had their things going on. Like it was tough. I was just some, you know, up and comer. So I was like, I got to figure this out on my own. I got to figure out how to grow. Like you're crazy. Mm -hmm. Why do you want me to freeze the weed, right? Yeah, no, my old boss at the grow store, he'd always sell me trim and stuff. And I was like, bro, fr freeze some, uh, like just a couple peas for your boy, like so I can wash it and stuff. And of course, it was Dutch treat. It did absolutely terrible. But, you know, that's the live and learn, baby. You learn those, take those L's and you try to say, how can I apply this at least, you know, coming forward and stuff. So it's I true. It's a tough, I, I get it as a grower. It's a tough sell where you're like, hey, man. This all goes great for you and everything's smooth. 
take this section and just freeze it so we can do some R and D. And it's like, now people see the, the other side of it, but it, I, you know, as a grower, it is, that is a tough swallow sometimes. No, definitely. Yeah. But, also, Oh, there you go, babe. You go. No, no. I was going to say that like, uh, when you're growing for flower, you know, you might be focused on certain aspects, like what the flower looks like, mm-hmm. things like that. When you're farming for resin, as we kind of refer to it in NorCal, you really want to be pulling that jeweler's loop out. You know, you really want to be scoping it, watching that resin develop from like right when it starts putting on, seeing, do you have full heads? Do you have good structure for a water hash of physical extraction and then you know this some of the stuff we get into in our class of course or her class and stuff Mm -hmm. and the one hopefully we're going to put in cali but like understanding that like genetics are king with this type of environment that we're in where we're for me part of the beauty of what we do is it is still a little bit artistry you know a lot of those solvent extracts and stuff can get very like a plus b plus c equals d and you're just going to really shoot shoot it through the loop every time where like with hash making you can really have need to have an understanding of the resin like how to deal with different resin and how it acts in this kind of crazy way we decide to extract so and how does it behave too like is the resin super sticky like when you touch it or is the the resin a little bit more sandy and tacky like you can hear it like you're gonna touch your plant I'll touch the top, touch the bottom, you know, so you don't like, yeah. you don't, you don't like actually break all the trichome heads. But when you're like, when you touch your plant, you break the trichomes and you're going to like, you can feel it. What kind of oil d- does it have? So a bunch of hash makers, they have been looking for the tackier strains that you can hear like, tack, 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 mm-hmm. like, because it's actually, it's easier to deal with it. Less will like grease in your bag. You're going to have higher yields um and that's just like a characteristic that a bunch of like hash makers have and actually cultivators do have been looking for because like the smarties that we were mentioning that lady is hard to wash like for real she's a like, greasy she's one. she's a greasy one which like, is when you touch the plant and then your fingers feel slippery yeah, yeah. almost Not wet tacky, but wet and you won't feel mm-hmm. the sandiness like with cookies and cream gmo you can f- literally feel the heads rolling around in your finger and it won't break down whereas like skittles and smarties like that's immediately just goop you know like it just greases immediately once it touches your skin those heads are broken you know you're that's, breaking that cell wall that's that silica head that you know of silicates is just like opened up let's drop a little tip here so yeah the drop sm- yeah knowledge. so the smarties right that it's super sticky and hard to deal with that lady is greasy like we figure out together mm-hmm. that if we did mixed wash with something with drier resin, like cookies and cream, it will not grease as much in the bag. So the drier resin somehow, I don't know how everyone, but the drier resin helped out, you know? Pick it up. Pick it up move it along, on the bag know? and move it along on the bag. Yeah. So it was like a great, like after we figured that out, we did some more like Smarties washes and we were always like, oh, oh 20% of cookies and cream, 30%. Yeah. Plus, it was like a great, amazing mix. Like we, yeah, the flavor we released like smart well cookie, together. and uh, and it was just like very, very incredible. Shout out TLC back in the day, dropping that for those who remember, you know, way back that two fifteen era, that smart mm-hmm. cookie drop. Yeah, I wasn't even there. I just I got think, round two. I just yeah. got into round two. I think <laughs> it was so many good drops. Oh, yeah. fucking! Man. They lit LA on fire for a while with the stuff that was coming through there. Like yeah. it really was. It was like sourced and grown, and the strains and the the debut. It's just it was really impressive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's definitely like a the, lot one of the fire, the spots. Right yeah. I'd say also just to to go back to that. Shout out to one of our homies, simply Adam, who I think made mm-hmm. one of the most innovative devices for people who are starting to pheno hunt for solventless hash. A lot of times, it's hard to put enough material toward a full wash, so the resin dial is actually like an amazing tool that you can use to wash like small amounts of material like 20 30 wet grams only and put it through the resin dial and it basically will do like a mini bubble hash extraction and give you an idea of like in 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 water hash a lot of times that money zone is that 70 micron to like 150 micron so you can put 
the screens on there and just see and then freeze dry these discs and just give like a mini extraction and get some data on whether something's worth testing at a larger level without committing so hard to the wash. And also maturity, right? Because exactly. when we do the, 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 yeah. the test wash, you know, mm -hmm. with the bow jar, okay, we get to see how much resin just like gets in the bottom and you're like, oh, okay, this yields, this can yield a bunch or this cannot yield a bunch. Like this won't yield a bunch. Sorry, my English, everyone. Not my mother language, so I apologize for the mistakes I make on that. Um, but when you do the resin dial, like you can test wash like throughout different days. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I'm going to test wash this and I'm going to test wash like in seven days from now. So, and you all know where it's going to set. Okay, so how much 150 I have? So how much 70 I have? Okay, everything's in the 70. Okay, let's wait more, you know? Like there's a bunch of 150, like full heads, mature. So it's very, like the, uh, the resin dye is very interested on that regard too, because you get to understand also the maturity, not only like yield in a way, right? It's so important. And it's great for like, not everyone can sacrifice, you know, uh, five plants, which is what, 2,500 grams or 5,000 grams wet, something like that for a test wash, right? So right. now with that, you cut off basically an ounce of you know, let's say a four by eight, or if your house grow four by four, if you're doing your legal limit plants or even outdoor, right. Or greenhouse, and you can do a test wash. The only thing you really have to, the next step is to have a small freeze dryer. If you want to sample the hash that you just cut off, but to see yield on a small level to be like, is this going to be worth it? And maturation rate of the trichome, like there's nothing out there like that. We actually well, own one as well. You don't even really need a freeze dryer too. This is something Alice put me on game with like empowering people to do things even without these crazy tools. Cause like getting a freeze dryer in Brazil is like crazy. You know, you got to import get a freeze it. Dryer in Brazil. No, it's, it's almost impossible. It's like 45,000 you know, so. reais. I'd say yeah. most so places. In, you know. Yeah, import. most no, places. like so. in, in Spain, you pay like yeah, 45. Super possible. You, okay, you yeah. pay 45, 45 100, uh, yeah. euro, whatever. 100 euros. About, about, what, about what you pay here. 5,000 5, euros, stuff like ooh, that. A simple frost free mm -hmm. freezer. You know, that's going to dehumidify at a super low temperature and dry your hash out. And like you can treat that like you would air drying and stuff. You can make some really nice product and you can keep that oxidation level low. And like when you go to press it, you're going to make some. Honestly, you'll probably be impressed with the product that comes out. Or you'll, get, you'll become friends with like the people that do meat or actually wine. And you're like, oh, can I use a room? Uh -huh. <laughs> Just yeah. to dry some hash. It is cool to see the integration of like. Oh, this came from the restaurant business or this came from this. And then now it's, it's upping everyone's level of this. It's really interesting. Yeah. There's so much that comes from the food world, you mm. know, hash and food are so much alike. Like every time I talk to a friend about hash making that it's like the same, the friends a cook too, or some, or like, yeah. what do you call like people that make desserts? Like, but, but how do you call it? Uh, bakers, bakers, patisseries, yeah. bakers, you know. patisserie. patisserie, yeah. They're like so similar with hash, like playing with texture, with different temperatures, with like, uh aging is just like very 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 nice yeah i'd say a lot of skills in the kitchen translate to the hash room you know i've never been a kitchen person honestly but a lot of people tell me that like it's very similar the like the way you have to like keep areas prepped clean make things sure things are clean like doing all these things like and i feel like people that come from that industry are you know usually pretty good at the hash making game that's awesome. Could yeah. you guys run through a few of the awards you guys have won? I know I know it's a kind of bragging a little bit, but just run through a few of the stuff you guys won lately. Um, so Eagle Clash um this year with the Grape Cast. And then I got Flynn got first place with the uh Dosi Papaya on twenty in twenty twenty. Also Eagle Clash Barcelona. Mm -hmm. I got second place with the Smarties. I was grown up in Humble, you know, on that first grow. Close to the College of the Redwoods. Um, we also got uh, the, the Emerald Cup for uh, first place for uh, personal use with uh, Screaming Mimi's. Screaming Mimi's hash. And I think... It's all our, hash. Our most just always hash. Always, hash <laughs> always resin, never <laughs> rosin. And I would say, for me, that's one of my most proud wins, the Emerald Cup, because A, it's such a long-standing event, but B... I won it with Alice and then C, we won with hash in a category that had hash and rosin competing against each other. Damn. So I was very proud to bring home that first place to show that for me, resin is king. 
Yeah. You better bring the good resin if you want to impress me. <laughs> for sure. And just like a Fuck joke on the, on the Screaming Mimis too. Like the Screaming Mimis was like an ice cream cake back cross. So everyone was just like, what is this? This is so loud. And then we're like, uh, an ice cream cake back cross. And the person was like, no. They get mad they about it. They get mad. They get mad the they liked oh, it because yeah. it was the era of the ice cream cake meme. <laughs> you know? Fucking punch right there, player. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. you know? yeah. If it's good, it's good. You know? PP, Don't get bro. mad. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's true because you I liked it though, right? <laughs> I have a buddy that has a... Uh, it's called sugarberry scones is like the strain they put it out there as. You go. But it's an ice cream cake fino or whatever off one of the hunts and everyone loves it who tries it but you know as the grower you're like what are the genetics on this you know because you're a grower <laughs> so you always have to ask that you know you're interested so it's it's just funny it's interesting because it's people that bias needs to be eliminated a hundred percent it's it's, ridiculous. it's there for no reason like yeah. fire is fire for, exactly yeah. yeah especially with the seed release stuff like that there's going to be mad different ice cream cakes out there just than that widely circulated norcal cut that everyone got tired of like it's not the it's only like, ice cream cake. for yeah. me it's like is it a good batch and is it a flavor i enjoy yep simple as that it's Man. like ice cream well cannabis like is a, a personal thing or whatever should be you know that's why it's nice to blind test things i love the blind test thing yeah. hey the blind test on the freeze jars. dryer should we talk about this oh yeah this is cool the guy the guy who made the resin dial actually did set this up so um simply adam set up a flight that was very interesting it was like three strings uh actually so six grams right uh three different strings half freeze-dried half air-dried and there goes alice Looking at Flynn and saying, dude, that was, so, that was such a punch on my face. It was so good. I loved it. Um, I was like, yeah, Flynn, of course, like air drying is much more superior. The art of like drying with air and how much, how long it takes and the magic. And okay, there I go. <laughs> dude, the blind test. I liked every coat of armor on the freeze dryer. It was a slap on my face. I needed that. That's why I think it's nice to blind test because you have bias. We have bias. Everyone has a bias. So usually bias. it's the flip bias. side so where bias. I end up looking around like, damn, she was right. I was over here thinking I knew what was up. She just told me drop game on me like that. But I think that's the only time that's happened from my side. So I'm <laughs> real proud. Yeah, straight up. Have you guys seen the hash calendar? That's like yes. every day you open up. Remember when you were a kid yeah. and you have Last a calendar and you open up yeah. on Christmas and each one's like a different chocolate going all or like a, like candy, a advent calendar, right? Yeah. yeah. And it goes towards the final day of Christmas where you open it up and it's like a, uh, it's another piece of candy, but it's like the 30 days of leading up to Christmas. They did one where that's hash where every day you open up and it's a different dab of a different strain, you know, for the whole month. Wow. I just thought it was, yeah, it was like getting creative. Pretty cool. Yeah. We were there on the on the uh, Christmas, Christmas one. one this last year. Now they're yeah. doing a w Easter one right now too. Yeah. But yeah, we were there with uh, what, what was that again? Sean's, Sean's no, Berry Crunch. Berry Crunch. Yeah, yeah ABR. Oh yeah, ABR Farms. Okay. I love that guy. Shout out ABR. I yeah. think honestly, that guy puts out the best, low key, best, uh, best resin, best resin farmer in the in the game. Even though his, who is it? Uh, Sean from ABR Farms in Sonoma. ADR. ABR. ABR. Sorry. Yeah. Got it. No. Apple, uh, banana, rabbit. Yeah. ABR. There we go. ABR. Look like at that. No. Uh, <laughs> just so uh, people know the three. Yeah. yeah. No, he. Uh, it's confusing, man. We got to get into it, you know? It's pretty crazy. I think he's one of the few people I've ever seen to like consistently like many strains be able to grow full melt six star resin from full sun full season and debt plants that would literally you could hand it to someone and it would be as good or better than indoor no one would question it if you're like yes yeah, the indoor you know like so clean it's like oh my god man doing magic over there he so does shout magic out, we shout need out more, to of ABR. The, more of those guys in the game for sure yeah 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 definitely that would turn things around I feel like one of the biggest blessings for us of like, okay, so in the beginning, I mean, I say in the beginning when I was with Flynn, because he started way back, right? But um, when we were like first growing together and uh, doing the hash, it was all single source. All of it. We never worked with anyone else's material. I never but worked with anyone's material The before. biggest wow. blessing of having our plants being 
as you know, our we plan. had a we had to we cut had down a our plants. disagreement with code enforcement about the interpretation of a law. You know, so then we had to deal with that. So stuff. that's how it goes, and we dealt with it. It's all good. So yeah, after Sonoma County made us cut down our plants, we actually started working with other like farmers' material, which was different materials, which was a big blessing for us actually. But it's so interesting to work with other people's material. It's nice that nowadays we work with farmers that actually grow indoor, they grow full sun, full season, they grow like greenhouses, and we just get to see all the differences throughout the seasons. And like, it's just like, the, the hash is like the final, like it's the biggest expression of the plant. It's like the final test, you know? So you get to give feedback to the grower. Like, hey, you took this to maturity. Hey, you didn't take this to maturity. Hey, what happened over there? Like we, you can see it, like mm -hmm. you can see it, it's visible, like what comes out in the bags. But um, it, was just, it was just like beautiful to be able to watch, with, uh, to be able to work with different growers and um, be able to experience so many different kinds of resin and not only what we were focusing the single source, because unless you're pheno hunting all the time, you're also, you're actually running strains that you love and strains that you have. Limited. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's limited, you know. But yeah, that's you guys got plans to start doing both again. Yeah, yeah, we're at, yeah, sweet. Literally, this is after this like trip and stuff. I'm like, all right, all right, I'm what I'm hunkering down. I'm getting our little six got plant going right again, and you know, doing our thing and starting to pop seeds and kind of getting back to like that pheno hunt life that I love and that grow life a little bit. That you know, I've been loving loving traveling the last couple of years, but I'm excited to get growing some plants again a little bit. So yeah, definitely. And the idea for us this time is, I mean, of course, we're probably going to take a little learning curve over there, but our idea is to start like growing back like in uh, beds, indoor beds. Mm -hmm. So I want to check it out how it is. Cause yeah. Do some living soil. Do some living soil indoor yeah. beds. It'll that's perfect. We're gonna, that's what weird. type of flavors are you thinking? Wow. I mean, we got, so, I got so many seeds built up from over the years and then we did a little project. I, I mean, I did a little project in Humboldt with my partner and made some seeds that, you know, this last couple, well, this is 2020 now, actually, because it takes a while to test stuff. You know, it takes years to do this seed breeding stuff. It's a patience game if you want to do it right. But yeah, we did some seed stuff there. So we got some of our own stuff to work with, with genetics that, you know, we've ran before but it'll be new obviously popping crosses of those and stuff those like seeds that, go so. worldwide there's a bunch of people all over the world growing their, them right now the, yeah. the papaya cross with cookies and cream Sh shout out doc hayes and uh heavy resin in spain actually because two years ago we gave them some seeds one year ago one year ago we gave them some seeds and then they popped them and then they gave us some resin from from harvesting that same genetic when we were back there this last year and it was like Probably one of the most amazing, humbling experiences I've ever had to have someone be like, yo, yo, I took the time to like pop your work, not just like consume a product, you know, like that, but like to, you know, hunt your seeds and then like make hash and then here's a jar of it, you know, like, wow, incredible, like big respect and big yeah. respect to all the boys in Spain, like slight, um, you know, the La Sagrada fam, like everybody that shows us love when we're over there, Uncle's Farms, Z, the Piatella gang, who, you know, we're hoping to start bringing to the United States a bit for everybody that don't know about the new wave coming from Spain. Um, I think, you know, I'm excited for that, I guess. That was fun. We linked up with Fidel's cousin. What was the... Hassan's. Hassan's. Did you get to link with Hassan's? No, I, don't I saw him so. moving around some hash. The hash in Spain is incredible. It really is. Yeah. We, I mean, it's super. It's cured hash, everyone. It's fresh. There's some fresh. And there's some bunch of cured hash, which is something that in this new technological world here, we don't see it. We just pull it out of the freeze dryer. Six star, Freshy, baby. freshy, yeah. freshy. Yeah. Super <laughs> wide. Well, super wide hash. It was interesting to see, like, did you guys get to go to Uncle's Farms last time you were there and check no. that stuff out? No. Okay, so it's interesting to see kind of that like return to the old world, return to the traditional, but bringing that new wave in a way too of that level of like fresh frozen material, six star extraction, like really clean, clean resin, but then still curing it and creating a more shelf stable version of something. Because definitely I think we all understand that like cold cured rosin 
dominates the industry right now for a reason because frankly resin is a little bit hard to deal with you got to carry your freezer everywhere fresh press things start to oxidize they start to change they start to get lose quality on you if you don't really know how to treat it or you don't have the infrastructure to treat it well but when you do that piatella and you create that more shelf stable product that's more accessible to normal people that you can you know just bring around with you more like you would other things it i think it'll open up and like really bring for me the resin experience that i think is like unmatched by anything else that that like resin head from the plant just like intact like that hanging out cured but cured in a way that keeps everything you know top quality i think people don't talk enough about that like that you know just rosin has already been smashed everything's been pressed everything right not to say anything bad about it, it's phenomenal i love rosin but there is a completely different experience when those heads have been almost just like carried right to the final process right and now you're smoking an entire head that's that's been preserved perfectly compared to something that's been already pressed or already squeezed or manipulated at all it's it's two different experiences if you love hash, like try both. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy no, they all. both have their mm-hmm. place. I, I see what both. you're saying. Like about, you know, the advanced level of just like even storing it, carrying it around with you. Like it's a lot. You don't have to behave like you own an ice cream company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For real. No. The, <laughs> that, the coolers I see people have and like, you Yeti know, there's gang. coolers with like fans <laughs> in it. Like, you know, it's like. The dry yeah. eyes you have to keep it's buying crazy. from yeah. stuff to stuff. I don't know yeah. how much money I've spent on dry eyes over Eddie the years. Boys. This shit ain't easy, man. Uh, it ain't. You know what I mean, yeah. that's for you guys. For Shout out to all the hash heads out there <laughs> holding it, it down, doing that extra work, baby, to preserve that resin. Keep what's coming pristine. up for Wook Sauce? What's, what's coming up? What's the, the next step? Uh, I mean, I guess for me, like, you know, definitely moving into, we've been doing some collab work with, uh, you know, Fidel's we're pretty excited to drop some, uh, some of the first hash in hash hash holes. The ones he's done previously of yeah, so rosin. No, no, so we're no, dropping no, ones inside. with hash, that great hash, gas, hash. that great Whoa, gas in damn. the middle. Me and him were talking earlier today. Wow. I'm very excited about that. I gotta be so careful I think when that's gonna be a, Nobody smokes like that, right? Dude. Fucking dude, like, that yo, man just be rolling gorilla finger, after like, gorilla finger after gorilla finger after gorilla finger. In and Velma, both crazy. of them, uh-huh. just like she smokes too, blunts, yeah. lots of blunts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've been laid out. I've been like, uh, <laughs> it's a lot of hash. <laughs> yeah. with the, I mean, with flour too. But yeah. I don't think about it it's with a lot of sauce award winning full melt. I took one hit and I'm like. Yeah, I'll definitely. That grape back. gas is loud. In it's there. it's a strong one. It's no yeah. joke. The grape gas is a strong one. Oh, yeah. we gotta try those. That is drop. such a good tasting hash, man. It's crazy. Uh, also, before oh, you yeah. go to yeah. this, because this is fully melted stuff, but also trying to do the piatellas. Like I think that bringing this like side of the curing the hash here, I think mm-hmm. it could be very fun, and um, for two reasons. One, going back to the traditions, right? Because somehow we stopped curing hash and we just pulled that thing out of the freezer. And we were talking before about like mental health and things like this. And a bunch of people are like smoking like so high THCA, which is something Mm -hmm. that I'm not saying that it's bad for you necessarily, but it can be like, can can be a hard experience for a few people, can cause anxiety. So curing the hash actually changes also the cannabinoids. So I think it's very interesting to go back a little bit to this curing area with the full melt six star. So I can't wait to like try to experience some of that. I think that's the perfect unification actually of me and you, babe. Like the uh-huh. the traditional sides a little bit, you know, the pre press, yeah. the curing and the technology. So I think that that could be very fun. That's a beautiful and thing. Bring it up, Amor. No, this I mean, this is other than the Piatella, you know, we're obviously very excited about that. I've been loving that for years and big respect to Z over there, at Uncle's Uncle Farms, Farms in Spain who you know, developed this process and really showed love and talking to us about it and like showing us hash and always just really showing us love when we're over there and seeing that, yo, this is a fellow resin head. Like this dude loves his fucking hash. Those Italians, man, they love hash. It's pretty crazy. Like all those boys crushing game over there are Italian pretty much. It's funny. Yeah, shout out to La Colada. Yeah. Yeah. I love those guys. Those love those guys. Dope. I got to sit with them real cool. Yeah. Like like humble people genuine people mm-hmm. 
you all can of go Italy back and listen to that. Hey, that that's an episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah go, go check back that out. And Euro series, uh, La Colada. We we got that on audio only. Yeah, that was fire. That was I, I saw the, that the on Amsterdam, uh, like recorded in Barcelona, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah at the club. Uh -huh. Awesome. We pulled up. Yeah, that's amazing. They are very like welcoming over there and very yeah. passionate about what they do. Mm -hmm. so. For the average person that loves hash, if you're going to travel anywhere in the world, where do you go? Ooh. You guys have traveled all over for hash. I'm just, just last question. I know we've gone long, but I mean, yeah, if you're going to travel somewhere and you're a hash lover, where do you go? Cali, baby. Yeah, is it? I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, it depends on what you're looking for. But if you're yeah. looking for different experiences and quality, I can't deny that the West Coast is just insane. Yeah, you can really experience it all here, and you get, and there are people doing traditional right. hash here and, and stuff terroir, like that. Yeah. Everyone like that. I mean, that the traditional experience Humboldt, you, you, you know? accept it for how it is done in the culture and the roots and the beginnings, and you know, it's like kind of us bringing some people on the show that are like from the old school. Mm -hmm. You just pay your appreciation to it, enjoy the experience, but. You it's don't want to make it. You don't, yeah, yeah, it's different. it's different. I'd say that my dream is to go to Afghanistan. Yeah. For hash. When we asked Mila that, she said it would have been uh, something along the lines of like, it was amazing, but after the war, things have changed a lot. Yeah. To where before it was in a lot more production, a lot more legacy strains probably being grown a lot. Now it's definitely, there's still be places that happen. I mean, Girls in Green is one of my favorite things to like Instagram wise because I'll go and I get to take Thank a you, look man. into Fuck like, <laughs> look at these plants being, this is what kind of sparked the conversation between us where I kept bringing up the pack gods. Like we need to go to South America and let's like, I want to, I see, keep seeing this scene of us like either riding horses or walking into this field of just fields of weed for real. I'm yeah, like Colombia. Colombia. <laughs> yeah, Colombia. Colombia. Genetics. Yeah. yeah. That those guys ha had an Instagram post that is like imprinted in my head where they were on like mules or horses and they're coming over the top of this hill. And then all you see is just plants. And it was like, is this a commercial? This is right. crazy. <laughs> yeah. And it I'm like, is. this is in Colombia. Like all I can go to is like, I want to be there. I want to experience that. I want to watch the sun come up or go down over that, you know, with homies. Like it's cannabis in different parts of the world is just, it's, it's a, it's a very cool experience. It is. And it's nice to see the difference of everything. There's magic everywhere. So what it's is not that? what's the best. It's the alien Skittles. Yeah. It's just yeah. that I carried it like this a little oh, bit and it has insane. a it has crazy texture. So I'm I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. This oh, is with uh wow. another brand I, I have out of with my licensed company in Southern Humboldt. This is fully melted. So this is some stuff we did with uh Alien Labs that we'll be dropping on four twenty in San Francisco. Damn. We got Shout a little, we got a little labs, thing man. going on there. So yeah, shout out Alien Labs. Like, they really crazy. grow some fire. Where will you be able to grab? Like, where can you go to get this? You can check our page out and see, <laughs> where we're, see where we're doing the pop up Yo. in SF. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, my God. I'm probably going to see insane. somebody in New York, too. So. Show us the yeah, jars. I think they got gonna, the head stash Alien be a little, Labs jars, little, uh, too. Shout out Aster Club. I think Aster Club might find their way to some over there for the 420 events. Ooh, so. the yeah. Alien Skittles. Yes. Yo, this is nuts. If you can get the Alien Skittles, Get that. It's, it's limited. You <laughs> can that. see Great it's, uh, this is 53 of 120 here. So yeah, I see there's that. There's not much I going on. What you unpacked is definitely, this definitely is something a, special. Get that, yeah. everyone. Y'all try it, please. Yeah, please. I'd be hitting B from uh, Astro Club like, hey, bro, so how do I reserve some alien Skittles? Uh, <laughs> Look at this, though. You guys, you showed me that you're like, here's some alien labs. And then I was like looking through. I'm like, man, these are like the head stash. This is like gnarly head stash nugs. And then I was like... You had to get this straight from the yeah. grower. This is, <laughs> man. Ooh. Alien Lab Skittles. I lost that. Head's oh, doing man. a great Ted. job on the Z, man. I'm, uh, every the, alien, the collab you guys did, everything. You can't deny Ooh. the hype, everyone. The Z's. Straight up. They're too good. Oh, cool. <laughs> can't Fire. deny. Yeah. <laughs> I say it like we were talking about anxiety and stuff like this. And dude, Skittles is one of my favorite yeah. strains because Fire. of that. It's one of like the things that make me feel like besides the taste that it's amazing and floral i look i love floral things mm -hmm. like skittles and uh, actually the white thorn rose that bell uh and uh heritage they won like actually the emerald cup with too uh but skittles just makes you feel good yeah it just brings that light like good like the day's bright and everything's good and you can not, get stuff done too yeah mm -hmm. but not That's not in an anxious it, way you know like it, like not in a uh, way if you're looking at 
it as like an inhibitor and enhancer, like Skittles is more of an enhancer. Like it does more to like enhance my day than, you know, hold it back in any yeah. way. If I'm trying to get stuff done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't, it's not at like night, a couch It's not always strength. the best yeah. though, you know, because then at night it could get your, you know, mind running, but you, you can smoke it all day long and not get sick of it, which I can't say that about many strains. No, I mean, okay. we're all going to dab up and. Uh, Hold and on then, one second. I think oh, we yeah, got to or I, oh, there yeah, I don't Phil want, w, I don't she doesn't want to dry it. I don't want to dry hit. <laughs> yeah. Come on now. I mean, I, I, I dab this like all the time, which is a dry hit, but if I have a puff go now, like yeah. a. Like I, and I just do, I just gotta say shameless plug too. Yeah. We do uh we do toe processing up in Humboldt. I'd love to find more farmers to work with and empower more people in like the legal market to, you know, be successful and you know, come through and see what's up and you know, see if we can find a synergy to work together because it's hard to find ways to win in this crazy legal market, but I think there's a good way to a good way to get it done if you can, you know, find the find the ways to check the boxes. What's the best way for people to get a hold of you guys or to reach out if they want to take you up on that? Yeah. Yeah. They can, they can reach out at a uh, sales at trichometry.com or go to our website, um, fully melted.com. And there's ways to contact us and get a hold of us. Instagram's always a great way. I try to be active on there and answer everybody and, you know, be, you know, be active in the community and interacting with people and stuff like that so reach out to me through there definitely so fully melted.com there's ways to t- touch base and then wook sauce winery on instagram, instagram to be able to at least like connect with you also fully melted ca can find us there for our for our instagram as well for fully melted black leaves 100 percent getting that uh collab <laughs> after this like I'm, I'm looking forward to this bro uh, i really you guys have been someone i've yeah. looked up to as a hash brand since we got to california you know, I, we started an Instagram and you were like always one of the top hash makers that I was like, wow, this guy's just doing it right. You know, just, vi- just different. And the care you can see in the product, like just you also championing, championing, uh, full melt. And then knowing all the other aspects of cultivation and how the processing and now with Alice bringing in all the other stuff of traditional hash making and resin manipulation and all that. You guys are an awesome combo, man. It's been a pleasure to have you on first smoke of the day. And it's like, this is a long time coming. We talked, I think probably six months ago, trying to make something like this happen. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. Thank you guys so much for having us. We really appreciate it. It was, you know, incredible having this talk. So we really appreciate being here. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel very honored and flattered because I, I think of me coming from Brazil, it's like, fuck, it's a long way. I never imagined I would sit on this table, you know? So I'm very grateful. Thank y'all. Damn. We're, I'm grateful for you yeah. guys you guys brought amazing hash some of the best hash we've had on the show that's for damn yeah. sure um and shout out to girls in green yep much love at girls everyone. in green yes. they can follow you there yeah. at girls in green 710 content is in portuguese but you can always cre- uh, click on the translate button and as soon as we have like enough money gathered from the project i want to mirror it up all the content that we do in portuguese that it's amazing to english and i will shout out like the copywriter that works with me in the last like three almost four years now which is thais she's amazing and she makes a bunch of that like work possible she's like we work in us we have one mind you know so that's yeah. also what makes it possible so education is the key and i will keep pushing for that shout, shout out alice one more time just because she puts in so much effort and so much grind and so much of her own personal time and capital into just creating a free platform to educate people. Like it's incredible how this girl has like, I think 200 articles. No, and Girls in Green have over 400 articles already written <laughs> in Portuguese. I'm way off. I'm not even so, being respectful yeah, right now. It's a lot like, of free information for, for the Brazilian community, especially when you live through prohibition. One of the lack, biggest lack of things is information. And, yeah. Well, like nice information for you to even get informed even for the americans i reference them all the time the freeze dryer article on like people <laughs> asking me all the time about the freeze dryer i'm like yo go read this article right here i give the whole breakdown on what's up yeah. and you know and then she has written a bunch of other things around it to help you understand what you're about to do way 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 better much love thank you all so much absolutely thank you guys wooks off winery and alice with girls in green you guys amazing yeah we'll be we'll be uh, on the lookout whatever comes up definitely flint and alice dope team man yeah looked up to you guys for a long time it's been our pleasure absolutely episode 90 man it's first smoke of the day we're out peace